Hey, what's up, BMX nerds? Welcome back to another episode of Canode Knows, brought to you by Dig BMX. This week on the show, we got legendary filmmaker Stu Johnson. And you have to say legendary before his name, because, man, honestly, I didn't really realize how much he's done prior to this interview and looking into it and doing the little bit of research that I did. He's been going since 95. I was five years old, and he was putting out BMX videos, so... And he's still going, holding it down, doing the X game stuff. And I'm happy I got to talk to him about that. Honestly, there's so much stuff that he's done that I felt like I could have asked a thousand more questions and we could have another podcast and I'd, it would be just as good. But I really enjoyed the conversation with him and I hope you guys do too. Um, it's a good one. Thank you, Stu, for coming on. Before we get into it, go to rarlife.com, use promo code Canode and get yourself some green superfoods and drink them and be healthy and wise and amazing. Uh, if you're watching on Diggs YouTube channel, make sure you like and subscribe and leave a comment, share the show with your friends. And uh, I think that's it. Let's get into it. <laughs> Let's get into it. Here's Stu Johnson. Hi, Stu. What's up, Bobby? Uh, thanks for encouraging me to bring the podcast back almost a year ago at this point. Hey, my pleasure. I'm glad you did it. You sent a random text and uh, said, where's the podcast at? And I was like, that's a good point. And then I think I did Daryl. The, yeah, yeah they're all back. back. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah, I, I'd been doing a bunch of running and I was listening to the, you know, those, I've been listening to all the pot, everyone's podcast really since I'm trying to get in some miles. That's and, amazing. Uh, I was listening to yours and ran out a few, a few in, you know, and I was like, hey, hey, bring it back. <laughs> well, thank you, dude. It's, it's got momentum since then. So you're the, you're the little, you've seen that meme of the dominoes. You're the, you're the small domino and that's the big dominoes. <clears throat> uh, you look great. You look healthy. Uh, oh, tell me Did about you? this running that you're doing. Uh, actually, I've been kind of slacking on it the past, <laughs> past two or three months. But yeah, I kind of got into running a little bit a couple of years ago. I just, you know, when you have big projects and you're at home a lot and you're sitting behind the computer and, you know, it's kind of nice to get out and get some kind of exercise. Like, you know, riding is great, but more than not, it kind of beats you up. Yeah, for real. It's like, it helps you, you know. So I, I had kind of started you know, going, I tried to start running and then I would get a lot of knee pain and, and, you know, stuff like that. So I was like, oh, I just, I just need to start walking a bunch. So I'd start doing that and walking like a few miles every day and just kind of eventually started doing a little, you know, intervals, like a little walking, a little running. And eventually the knee pain kind of subsided and I started doing more running than walking. And yeah, I got into it, ran a half marathon. I'd like to do a full marathon sometime soon. Hell yeah. yeah. Good for you. Year or so so yeah. I had it's this, fun. I have the same thing with running. Like my knees, I'm like, no, nah, I'll just walk. I think walking's super underrated because it's like oh yeah. Doesn't spike your cortisol, but it is exercise, which is super dope. Yeah. I, I used to too. Yeah, I used to despise like walking. You know, it's like when you live your life on like a bicycle, you're used to getting mm -hmm. where you want to go in like no time, you know, and it's and it's obviously fun doing it. So yeah. I used to always think of like walking, like you know, any kind of distance walking was just being like really boring, but yeah, and inefficient. <laughs> yeah, inefficient, inefficient. Yeah. So so uh, yeah, it's not it's nice to do it. It's it's relaxing actually, which yeah. is you know, super I peaceful. Never, never really looked at it that way, but but yeah, I enjoy it. Except for right now, it's 110 degrees in Arizona, so we're, we're not walking. You know, oh, maybe yeah, in the pretty, mornings. Pretty close to the same here in Austin. Yeah. What's our? Yeah, it's it's miserable in Texas now. Yeah, summer is <laughs> yeah, not fun. It's hot. <laughs> I'm glad we're not alone. We both are sharing shitty, shitty, uh, shitty summertime blues, dude. It's like <laughs> just staying stuck inside. It's almost like it's a winter where there's snow. But I prefer it here. Anyway, yeah, Arizona I mean, scene is, season is coming. Yeah. I used to not really have to deal with the summer here much because I would just basically spend it on the road. You know, like when I moved yeah. to Austin uh, in 98, I started doing a lot of BMX stuff and just you know, would spend my summers like on the East Coast or just kind of traveling. And then when the prop stuff came along, I just I was gone a lot. Like I would be gone for four months on end, five months on end sometimes, you know. What was that like? How old were you when the, you got the props invite and were you already like filming? And like, how did, how did the, tell me your life stories too. How did it start? How did, how did you get in? Yeah. I mean, you just mentioned props, like start there. How did, uh, how did the props thing come up? Started props. Well, <clears throat> I grew up in Indiana and at, at one point in the mid 90s early 90s steve crandall and the fbm crew moved to indiana moved to fort wayne indiana where i was from um and in the winters we would go drive three hours to chicago uh skate park scrap and we would 
ride there. You know, we'd go, we'd go maybe twice, twice a month, every other weekend in the winter. And uh, Chris Rye and Marco Massey from props were Chicago locals. So they would always, you know, we'd always see them at the park and, and we'd talk to them and, you know, kind of became friends with them a little bit. And then, uh, you know, a few years later, I move up to Austin and uh, they had, I, I remember exactly what it was. They were on a road fools trip somewhere on the, in, on the East coast, Ithaca, New York. I can't remember which road fools that was maybe like road fools five or something, four or five. I'm not really sure, but anyways, they were on this trip and I was visiting Crandall in Ithaca, New York. And that's where they were at. And they were talking about, yeah, you know, we're on this trip. It's cool. But the only thing that sucks is we're missing this DK dirt circuit contest in Pittsburgh that we would film for the props issue. You know, and I was like, oh, that's a bummer. And, and you know, they knew that I filmed and they were just like, hey, would would you be interested in going and filming that? Like, you know, if we bought you a bus ticket and, you know, we'll pay you whatever it was. And and I was just like, you're going to pay me to shoot BMX stuff? Like, yeah, of course I'll do it. You know, <laughs> yes, so sir. like and then it was a dirt contest and I grew up riding dirt and I knew a lot of the guys that were in it and stuff. So I was all about it. I said, yeah, man, I'll I'll do that for sure. And it just kind of like did that and that that issue that was like the only thing i had in that issue and i think the next issue was like hey we have like these two other things if you'd like to film them and i did that and then like the next issue it was like hey there's like three or four things and we need help with this joe rich interview and you know i think i think for them it was hard to find somebody who was like um dependable and you know could get the, could get the job done and didn't just go to these comps and like party like crazy and be hung over the whole next day during the comp, you know? So yeah, it didn't take long with me being willing to like travel and actually like, you know, start paying some bills, like by doing BMX stuff, I was all about it. So you've always been this way, not partying, just dependable Stu. even when I mean, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say there, I wouldn't say there wasn't like a little bit of a party phase or whatever, you know, but (laughs) I think, I think uh, at that time I probably, I don't know if I was really drinking or not, but I've gone through like phases where I do a little drinking and then, you know, not, not drink it together. Or whatever. Yeah. And it wasn't really, it wasn't because like anything bad would happen. Um, it was just, I don't know, just kind of what I was feeling. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's, it's not, there's never really been like a party huge, phase. there's been, there's been a few party nights once in a while. Like <laughs> yeah. in the day, I would love know? to meet parties too. <laughs> I, I would, I would be lying if I, if I said that I didn't like during one of the East coast terminal contests, like filming pro on Sunday, go out and throw up in the parking lot and then come back. <laughs> Hell but, yeah. but I just, you know, like nowadays it's like, it's so few and far between that I even have like a single drink. I just, it just Good doesn't really do much for me, you know, like it doesn't really enrich my life in any capacity. So I just hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. I, and I'm, I'm not against it. Like I could, you know, if I, if I see an old friend and they're like, let me buy you a beer or a drink or whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll have a drink, but ceremoniously, but yeah. you know, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty one, one rare. Beer, it's pretty socially. rare. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, not a, rare. I just had, I've been not drinking, but I went out for celebration after my boss's mastermind and I had one beer and I was like, this is weird to just have one beer and sit and talk and then drink water and then go home. Like, I was like, yeah. okay, I'm an adult now. This is cool. Did you have a uh, job? I don't miss hangovers at all. Like, yeah, right. Me neither. Yeah, dude. I just if I'm if I were to have a hangover, I just I don't want to do anything. So it's yeah, like, me neither. It's it's just, you just write off a whole day, you know, if you're hungover. Two days sometimes. Two days. <clears throat> just don't feel right. Even after like the one beer, I was the next day. I was like, nah, I don't like that. It's because it's literal poison. Anyway, I could talk yeah. about that for an hour. Um, so when you got this props thing, where, did you have a job outside of BMX? Like, did you drop a job to go pursue this? And then, you know, I wasn't really like I had had a few jobs, you know, gr- growing up, like I think I had a, I had a couple of really crappy jobs in high school. I think my first job ever was like I worked at a Taco Bell for a summer when I was like 15, you know, to like yeah. up to buy a new frame or whatever. But, you know, after getting out of high school, I worked at a couple of T-shirt printing, you know, factories like they would do tour shirts for, you know concert tour shirts for whoever the Ramones or Snoop Dogg or, you know, stuff like that. And and I had worked a few of those jobs and, and I actually did like a small little like t-shirt BMX t-shirt clothing company, I think clothing company. It's just some t-shirts really. <laughs> yeah. uh, what was it in called? the mid nineties, it was called scum clothing. Sick. And it, and yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I made a couple of videos, you know, with that, with that moniker scum videos. And, and actually the guy that did poor boy clothing, Steve Inge, are you familiar with poor boy? No, I'm not. 
It was, it was <laughs> like a big thing in the mid nineties. It was okay. like, 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 it does sound familiar. Yeah. You would go to races and freestyle contests and he sold a lot of t-shirts and, and stuff, but anyways, he lived down in Texas and in, in uh, Fort Worth, I believe. And, and he did like a little distro called like sandbox distro. And he did like, like he helped get the first King bikes made with Stuart King and, and he distributed like FBM stuff at one point when they were only just doing t-shirts and videos. And so there was like a few years there where I was actually making a little bit of money doing BMX stuff. Um, just kind of like my own stuff, you know, my own t-shirts and videos and whatever. And How old are you at this A point? lot of money. But at the time, you know, I was living in a BMX house with like Crandall and a bunch of other riders in Indiana. And it's like, our rent was like, $75 a month. And that's, pretty <laughs> you know? that's amazing. It's just, you have so, so many people like piled in and <clears throat> Yeah, Chris Hallman and Colin Winkleman live there at one point. And, like, Damn. and it was just like a, a really cool hub in like the Midwest where like a lot of people would come through and, and yeah, we'd, you know, ride with them or whatever. But anyway, so I was like going to a lot of BMX races and like selling t-shirts and videos and some freestyle contest stuff too. And uh, yeah, so, but I mean, I still had a few other random jobs, like you know, worked with a roommate who's, who's owned a business. And it was like, you'd go into like department stores and like strip and wax the floors at night and stuff like that. And I think I'm sure I sold, when I got to Austin, I didn't, when I got to Austin, I was just doing like the t-shirt thing, but I, I had, I had a t-shirt, my own press, but I sold it when I moved down to Austin. Cause I didn't want to, I couldn't like travel with this thing. It was too yeah. big. Uh, so this distro sandbox distro, they were just getting stuff made, but I, when I got to Austin, I didn't really have a lot of money and I was just kind of like, oh man, I'm like riding bikes every day. And like, I don't want to go get a job. And I probably like, I'm sure I sold plasma a few times, you know, to like <laughs> no shit. <laughs> get money to pay rent or whatever. So when the props thing came along, I was like, oh wow, you're going to pay me to go to these events, hang out with all my friends, shoot the video, you know? And, then and, and it was always cool too. Like, you, you know, you'd try and do the best you could filming and you'd see, you know, at the, at that time I would just hand the footage off to Chris Rye and he would edit it. Yeah. It's like, Whoa, I filmed that contest and now it's like a cool section and props, you know? Yes. So, so it was like, yeah, it was like a, it was a pretty fun, pretty fun thing to get, get involved with and, and just uh, open it up like a world <laughs> of between and, and, you know, opportunity for me. The like I never, the road life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was like, I, it was cool. Cause I got to be like, I got to almost like live the kind of life that a pro rider would live, but without having to like, Send it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly you know so it was really cool uh, and, and just you know eventually stuff just snowballed from there tell me yeah. about the snowballing man keep going the snowballing <clears throat> i mean nearly yeah yeah so you know the prop stuff i started doing that i think it in like 2000 and you know instantly like within like the first four or five months i was just like i had gone from like doing you know just the first time doing one thing for them to like basically doing the whole props issues at Sick. that time they were doing like a, a ton of road fools videos and and those were huge undertakings you know and chris rye was doing those and and i think it, the, that five or so years before i got involved chris was doing just like you know they were doing the the video magazine maybe even like bi-monthly like every other month or, or That's you so know. much work so you're doing six <laughs> props video, regular props issues in a year. You're doing two road fools in a year. You're doing a best of at the year end video, you know, like, so I, he, I mean, he was just so spent, you know, he was just taxed and and he was like, he was really, you know, really stoked to have someone help out and help carry the load, you know, like, so yeah, that's that stuff. I was just, it was like full bore, you know, full-time job instantly almost because he, he needed the help so bad. And I was willing to do it you know, yeah. it, it was fun. Um, so a lot of that stuff. And then probably around, I think, I think it was 2005. I got asked to be the, one of the main filmers for the Etnies grounded video. Damn. So yeah, I was really stoked on that. That was like, I mean, I think it kind of made sense because half the team lived in Austin and I lived in Austin. So it's just like, you know, it was kind of meant to be, yeah. um, but that was that was really a really cool project you know that was like kind of like one of the first big projects i had done outside of props and i was just like oh wow you know like that's like that's like a heavy especially following up you know the forward etnies forward video that dave perrick made which is like 
probably one of the most like legendary BMX videos of all time. And <clears throat> yeah, Eric Project, who is also like one of my favorite videographers of all time. You know, uh, legendary. yeah, so yeah, legendary, legendary. Like, I mean, and yours is too, man. No, well, thank you, no. but definitely not on like some Dave Perrick level. <laughs> He's the man for sure. Um, but yeah, so that was like, that was like a really, I, I was honored to do that, you know, like to work on that project. How uh, long did that take? And how we, does it, how does it come about? How does that needs, like, do they just hear about you from somebody and then say, Hey, film a DVD? Like what the hell, how does it start? Well, I think so. So they had done that forward video. And at the time when Perrick did it, he was living in California, you know, so they have, Joe, Taj, Sandy Carson, like these guys are all living in Ruben, you know, like yeah. guys are all living in Austin at the time. And they're obviously guys that, you know, aside from Joe, he was injured most of the time for that, most of that filming period. But so it was just kind of like, you know, I was here and Dave had asked me to like, hey, you think you could help shoot a few things? Oh, and yeah, Taj. I don't know if I mentioned Taj, but Taj, you know, yeah. so it's like, so Even when you don't mention Taj, you've mentioned Taj, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So Dave was like, hey, do you think you can help out? And I was like, yeah, of course. I mean, I was like out when I wasn't on a props trip. I was home riding with these guys like every day, you know, like I, I lived with those guys, Joe and Taj for a couple for about a year and a half, like right when I moved to Austin. So we were riding all the time anyways. And, you know, I'd, I was doing this props project and I had just because I was doing it. I ended up getting an upgrade in camera. I don't even remember what I had, some really, you know, underwhelming camera at the time. And then Chris Rye was like, well, hey, if you're going to be doing more prop stuff for us, you know, you should, he had, a, he had a VX 1000 and he was like, you should, you should use this, you know? So I, I bought that off of him. So now I have like a good camera, you know, and I got the Century fisheye, you know, the MK1. Yeah. So that's the setup. I know. I know. It's so good. So so it just it just made sense for me to film these guys a bunch and you know when it was all said and done there were probably maybe like 35 40 clips in the video that i filmed so nice. you know so that already kind of had like a little bit of a foot in the door at least with like at the very least with john pova who was the team manager at the time okay. you know and um so and you're talking about forward right now That's, yeah you, you had clips forward. that you filmed so, for yeah forward. so okay so then when the time came for them to do this you know the next video to do grounded they wanted to do like a road trip and kind of get a bunch of the guys together, talk about ideas for this new video they were going to do and just kind of just really come up with a game plan for it. And so the trip was going to actually be, they were going to have like five, five skate park demos in this trip. And the first one was in Austin, right? So it's going to be the demos at the park and Mike Manzuri is like heading up the project because he works at Soltech, you know, so he's like overseeing, you know, skate projects over there and, and this BMX project. So he's on the trip and I can't remember if I'd met him or not. I don't think I had met him yet at that point. But anyways, I go to the demo and I have my camera bag in the car just in case like we need it or something, you know, and, it, and, and this demo is just like it's popping off. It's like, you know, again, Joe, Taj, Ruben, Sandy Carson, Garrett Burns there. And they all just like, they are all just flying across the park in all these different directions. Hell and yeah. Mike is just like, holy, you know, he's just like <laughs> overwhelmed. It just like, <laughs> like, like he was, he was just like, you know, and not to discredit him. He's amazing. He's incredible. He was, he was just a little bit out of his element because he hadn't really done much filming BMX stuff and didn't know the lines and, you know, the tricks oh. that much yet. And, and, uh, you know, we had been introduced at the beginning of the demo and probably about 20 minutes in, he just came over and he was like, Hey, do you have your camera here with you? <laughs> I was like, yeah. He's like, can you please help me? <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude, I would be happy to help you, you know? And then by the end of the, at the end of the evening, he's like, Hey, do you want to, you want to jump in the bus on and come on this trip with us? And I had nothing going on for that, you know, next week or whatever. And I said, yeah, dude, I'd be happy to do that. And by oh, the end yeah. of the trip, he's like, Hey, do you want to be, you know, one of you want to be the other, the other filmer on this project? Like, you know, him and me basically, and, you know, a few contributions from some other guys, but so you know, dope. That's yeah, awesome. It was really, it, it was, was really super cool. organic. That's incredible. Yeah, it, yeah. it was, it was totally organic and yeah. it, it was totally unexpected, but like, you know, 
I had already been getting along. I got along so well with all those guys. And then Mike is like, he's basically like the nicest, coolest guy you could ever hope to meet, you know, especially for someone who is as accomplished as he is and, and, right. you know, yeah. what he's done in his world. Like, he, you know, he would always be like the first to say, Hey, what do you think about this? You know, is this, you know, like he would never like came off as like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Just, you know, that's sick. Yeah. That's it's really, he yeah. was really, really cool, humble guy. And a mensch. Uh, yeah. is that the right word? Is he a What's mensch? That? A mensch? Mensch? Yeah, it might be. Yeah. <laughs> I've never used that word before, but my I, always I, a mensch. I, I, I hope it's a good one. <clears throat> I hope it's a good word. Uh, but yeah, that was a really cool project. Couple, couple years, two and a half, two, two and a half or something. And the, the coolest thing that I got to do with that was just like, that was right when like, you know, it was kind of a little bit of a changing at the guard of Etnies. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, Joe and Taj and these guys, they were kind of like, you know, they're getting a little bit older and they had a lot of responsibilities with T1 and whatever. And it's the same time that like Aaron Ross and Brian Kaczynski and Curtis Elwell, these guys, Danny Hickerson, these guys all did just got put on the flow team, you know? So yeah. I ended up doing like a lot of, a lot of that, like basically filmed Aaron's part, you know, and Kaczynski's part and so that, that was really cool because those guys ended up getting the bump to the pro team after the video, you know, because they had put in so much work, you know, they deserve um, it. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. So. I can see Aaron's part in my head. That's like imprinted from watching it so much when I was a kid, yeah. you know, it's so <laughs> crazy. Okay. Shit, Stu, your whole life is insane with BMX. So what's yeah. after, what's after grounded? I mean, uh, after grounded, I'm trying to remember, I think. So that would have been like, Oh, wait, Jeez. pause, pause. Okay. Let's stick on grounded for a second. I want to know, yep. like you, so your favorite, I don't know. You, the cool thing was filming the younger guys, but like, give me a memory that you have with Aaron, like a, what pops into your head from filming with Aaron, anything oh, man. Early or memorable? Uh, I, don't, I mean, I have a terrible memory, but me too. <laughs> one, one of the coolest things was, and he didn't end up getting it for that video i don't believe but we went to this rail in little rock arkansas and it was kind of a kind of a famous rail i think it was in like some of the shine and shook videos and stuff and um aaron was like yeah i want to go fakey and hop on this rail you know yeah and, and i and i that was just like unheard of you know for at the real. time and I, I i i mean i i probably still have like all the footage backed up somewhere of just him hopping on this thing in the middle of the night over and over and over and just taking it, you know, and getting so close a few times. And then it just being like having to call it at, to the, you know, he's at the point of exhaustion and just like, just so spent and all the light batteries are dying and everything. And, you know, um, but it was like, it was really cool. That that was like my first trip filming with Aaron and uh, to see, you know, a young dude who was like pushing progression that much and just like, really putting his all into it you know it was like it was like an inspiring thing to see you know it's hell just yeah like, yeah you know, it, it's like yeah i don't know it, it was it was just really cool to see it shows that. a lot of character what it shows a lot see, of character somebody seeing somebody like committed and going in is pretty admirable yeah i love, yeah. I love seeing it yeah. yeah and i mean seeing kaczynski go in um, <sighs> i can't even uh, imagine yeah. filming kaczynski dude. i mean it's, it's wild dude it is it's harrowing you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> i mean it, it is uh, you see all this Great. Yeah. That's like Brian Kaczynski and Sean Byrne right there. Basically. <laughs> I believe um, it. But I mean, you know, like how inspiring is that? You, you know, like it's especially for being someone who's, you know, your job is you got to go out and film these guys. You want to work with guys that are really into the project and really want to like push themselves and make great stuff, you know, right. like horrible stuff. So that's like, it doesn't get more motivating than that, you know, yeah. like, like I, I, I didn't, you know, sometimes, you know, some of the older guys that they've been on a lot of trips and they'd done this for a bunch of years, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's kind of hard to, Hey, can you want to come on this trip to film? Oh, well, I got this other obligation or whatever. But when you have a guy like Aaron or, or Kaczynski and they're young and they have time on their hands. And this is like, this is the, it's the goal they're working towards. They want to be professional BMX riders. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't even have to ask them if they wanted to go on trips. I knew every trip that I invited them on, they would go, you know, like, and that was, that's really like, yeah, that that's just that's something. Dumb. Yeah. It, it's, it's cool. Like to see people that fired up and, and that into a project and, and want to do it. It's like, yeah, it's motivating. Hell yeah. Get, well, it, helps, it helps get you out of bed in the morning to go do the stuff, you know, for real. All yeah. right. So thank you. Let's move on from yeah. grounded. <laughs> um, 
grounded after grounded i was still doing grounded while i was doing a bunch of props work um the but the other at that point i started kind of dividing my time up because i started working on anthem 2 like i was doing you know prop stuff and and before before that i was probably doing prop stuff i was doing you know i was doing like the majority of the issues but then after after the grounded because the grounded stuff didn't really take up too much too too much time you know a little bit we were doing like a trip a month or whatever but still had time to get the prop stuff in and and i was i wasn't spending much time at home so it wasn't really too hard to do that but then when the anthem 2 stuff came around i kind of started handing some of the props duties off onto walter perringer he kind of came on board and started helping out with with my workload which was nice because you know at that point um you know it's you're doing a lot of work for other people and and it's amazing opportunities and you're working with awesome people but at some point you want to do like your own project yeah. where yep. you're just like getting to call the shots on everything and you know i'm gonna this is who i want in the in the in the video and this is where we're gonna go on these trips and yeah just something i don't know you know i, I think i would always get that a lot too like after i made the first anthem and that came out at the beginning of 98 i made a video for trend which was the bike shop before empire tina okay. and Tom, that they did before empire i made a video for them and i put in a little anthem 2 commercial in that in like 99 and then it, all the time i would get people being like when's it coming out when's it coming out and I 10 just, years later 10 years later because i mean i i did not foresee myself getting you know full-time bmx work right yeah. you know shortly after that video came out so that yeah, kind of gives me hope for Maloof. He's his 1235 has had commercials in every video that's come out and it's been <laughs> it's literally been 10 years. So anyway. Yeah, I mean it's it's not easy to make, you know, when, when you're doing a lot of projects for other people, it's not easy to make that kind of stuff happen. Right. Yeah, especially it's when important. it's the same it's thing. It's the same work. Like Yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah, it's exactly. It's the same work. It's like Oh, I'm gonna clock out of work, and then I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, go to the same. I shit. might not even make any money off this second job that I'm doing. You know, right. like, uh, but but you know, I mean, it's kind of why you, you get into doing video stuff in the first place is because you love it and it's yep. fun. So yeah, it's important to do those kind of personal projects once in a while. I think you know, and then that one it had been, you know, yeah, it was over ten years. <laughs> was well, like- what was the first clip that was filmed for Anthem Two? The first clip that was filmed. Well, that that's funny because I I had during the middle of the prop stuff or or in the earlier prop stuff, probably 2003 or four, I went on a trip, a coalition trip, and we were in Salt Lake City. And I haven't heard the name coalition in so long. Yeah, yeah. I was on a trip and it was like, you know, Ryan Metro, Mike Tag, and I, I can't even remember exactly who else was on it. Yeah. But we were doing a trip in Salt Lake City. And at that point, I had talked to Mike Aiken about doing a, a part in Anthem 2. So while we're filming at Fuzzy's house and some other concrete park, like Mikey just comes along and, you know, he does a little riding and I film it and I'm like, hey, you know, you want me to just hold on to this? And he was like, yeah, whatever you want to do. Nice. So I there, there is a, like a little section in Mike Aiken's Anthem 2 part where it's like, you'll if you look, the bars are littler, you know, like yeah. you can tell you're like, oh, this has got a it's it's dated a few years 2003 yeah yeah it was so it was yeah it was like it filmed like (laughs) five or six years before the other stuff so but they were fitting that yeah that's awesome i love that i always because you can always remember like the the instigator of like oh okay this is the first thing and then you blink and then 10 years goes by and you have your video out what was the last clip filmed for anthem 2 do you remember oh man um i want to say it, it, it might not be the exact last clip, but it was like one of the last few. Um, it was like the week that we were having the premiere at the T, the T1 ramp. Uh, I was still working on the video. Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> My guy. Up until, you know, like, yeah, like yes. literally like three days up until like the, the, the video premiere. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's a, a clip where Chris Doyle does like a tail whip over like a big driveway thing out yeah. of it. It's like a ditch. Yep. Uh, that was in San Antonio. And yeah, that was, that was probably one of the last ones he felt oh, yeah. a couple things at like ninth street trails too, with him and Mark Mulville. And so those are probably the last clips I would assume. Such a good video, dude. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Why all black and white? I was just talking to somebody about this. They I were, don't know. I were really I, mad I, that it was all black and white. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but they remember it. Yeah, exactly. That's um, a good point. I don't know. I, I always kind of like black and white stuff. And I don't know who all would remember this, but there was an old skateboard video called Eastern Exposure 3. And that was all in black and white. And I was watching that a lot in like 97, I think, when it came out. So I had already kind of wanted to do the black and white thing. If you watch, there's a video, my first video ever, 1201, it came out in 95. And right in the intro, there's a few clips that are black and white. And I really love the black and white stuff on there. And I don't know, it's like, it just, it gives it, I, I think it gives the video a, a real consistent feel. Yeah, like, that's that's what I said. I said, dude, yeah. it makes it makes all the footage like cohesive and gives it all the same same vibe, which is cool. Because yeah. otherwise, you'd be kind of taken off by all the different colors and white balances and all that stuff. Yep. Twelve oh one, nineteen thirty five minutes long on VHS, dude. Yeah. What the? F <laughs> that's so crazy to think about. And that makes so much sense about your Instagram handle, Stu twelve oh one. Yep. Yep. Twelve oh one is the address of the, the it's, it was called the fat house. And it was a house I lived in with the fat bald men, FBM, Crandall, yeah. and Tag and Magilla and some other dudes. But they, when they moved to Indiana, they got a house on 1201 Fairfield street. And that ended up being, that was the fat house. And that's, mm -hmm. we all there. And that was like, that's where 1201, that's where the video was filmed. And uh, yeah, Crandall made a few FBM videos out of that house. And this guy, Kip Williamson lived there and he made a few videos out of that house. And it was kind of weird. Yeah, it was like, like you got multiple- rat boy clips in there? I'm looking What's at that? the, I'm looking at BMX MDB and I'm like, I see rat boy in the list of names. Where, did you film rat boy for 1201? Yeah, I no? can't remember if, I can't remember rat boy having a clip in 1201, but we definitely, we filmed out in, in Phoenix a little bit. Uh, you know, Eric Hillstead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Eric, he's got a couple of clips in 1201 or maybe not 1201. He's got a couple of clips in the follow up video called Lights Out. I did in 96. <laughs> so Dude, I, I was see five someone, years I old. See, yeah. How old? <laughs> five. <laughs> five. So I could see I could see someone mistaking Eric for Rat Boy if they didn't know any better. Just, yeah. like, you know, I mean, because Eric was breakless, a breakless street rider at the time. And there weren't mm -hmm. a lot of dudes who were doing the breakless thing. Um, but, yeah, I can't I can't recall Rat Boy being. Oh, you know what? There was a kid from Pittsburgh called rat boy and he was a uh, push trails local. So he huh. would have been in the video. So that's nice. That's yeah. The <clears throat> rat boy imposter. Dude, was that your first full length 1201? Is that what you that said? That was my first full length. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and I didn't even, that's funny. Cause are you familiar with Mike tag? Yeah. Yeah. So Mike, tag, not super familiar. I know the name. He's a legend. So, yeah, yeah. He moved, he moved to Indiana with Crandall and he had done some FBM videos with Crandall. And then in, in 90, beginning 95 or maybe late 94, he blew his knee out, you know, riding some trails or a street. I can't remember what it was, but he blew his knee out and he didn't want to just like sit around the house. So he bought a video camera and we would go to all these jams and contests and stuff. And he would bring the camera and he would film a lot. Sometimes I would like, Hey, let me see your camera. And I'd help kind of film or whatever. But towards the end of the summer, he's like, Hey, I have all this footage you know, you're doing this t-shirt company thing called scum clothing. Like and he always liked the music I listened to. He's like, you want to help me edit this video? And I said, yeah, sure. I guess I don't know anything about editing. He didn't either, but we knew Chris Rye and we went to his house in Wisconsin and he gave us like a crash course in editing, you know, to, to deck to deck. Like it was Dude, just like, yeah. Like yeah. not on a computer editing. Or oh, no, it, no yeah. computer. <laughs> You'd have to put each tape in. You got to fast forward it. You know, you would watch your tapes and write down all the time codes and where the tricks were and time codes would be broken all the time. And wow, it, it, it was a, it was a real laborious, like, you know, thing to do. A process. A process. Yeah, exactly. So, so, uh, yeah, so we did this video and, you know, I helped Mike edit it. We just, we didn't know what we were doing. We just on the fly learned it and just did it and put it together. And, and it actually went over pretty well. Like we sold a bunch of copies. And like I said, I was doing the t-shirt thing at the time. And this guy, Steve Inge, he had this distro. So it was like going to like, you know, they'd go to like Dan's comp and they were at races and all the racer kids would want to buy videos. So yeah. they'd be like, Hey, what video has a bunch of trails? And they'd be like this video and <laughs> scum 1201. You know, so, so, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Scum 1201. So <clears throat> A lot of kids, a lot of kids uh, at the races and at the jumps bought it. It is so wild to think about BMX in a time with no internet and no computers to edit. Like, 
yeah it's, shoo, you've seen the whole transition dude that's you yeah it's weird we would it's we would put weird. on we would put on jams and the only way like with jumping jumping contest you know at our local trails but we would go to like races you know or the national four hours away and hand out flyers and with all the directions and you hope the directions were like right and people yeah. could send them and wow and we had a jam and they're like oh shit 150 150 people just showed up you know <laughs> all over <laughs> the so place sick. but it's wild because you didn't know who was showing up it's not like someone was texting you saying yeah i'll see you there on saturday you know right <laughs> let's <laughs> let's jump back to the future uh anthem and i guess this is still the past but back to the let's go back to the future anthem <laughs> two uh what was the premiere like for you where did you guys do it that's one of my favorite things about bmx yeah. is the video premiere night that's yeah, the, my favorite thing yeah the first premiere was at t1 it was at the t1 ramp so, so that was like yeah it was it was incredible like you know the fact that joe let us do it there and there was, I mean, wow, there are a lot of people there and it kind of blew my mind. But for me, it was also really weird because like, I'm doing all this work on the video leading up to the premiere. Like I'm sleeping like four hours a night, you know, maybe in like for the last like 12 days or so, two weeks of like the editing process, you know, and the, and all the guys, except for Aiken, all of them were in Austin, like staying at my place. So it was literally like the parts were not done. You know, it was yeah. like, Hey, here's, here's all your footage. Here's the song I want to use. You know I mean? When we went on trips, I would show them what footage I had, but you know, it was, it was a lot of like coming down to the wire, you know, and, oh. and, and okay. Hey, you know, like come into the, come into the room and watch it. And here it is with the music. Let me tell me what you think, you know, is there something you really don't like and I'll try and change it or, right Whatever. yeah it was it, so it, it was really like for me i was really like kind of stressed out excited but to super nervous and stressed out and just like kind of working around the clock to like get the video done that's the best uh, yeah. <laughs> i love that yeah, i don't know if it's the best i don't really like <laughs> that method but it's kind of just how it it's sometimes a lot of times that's just how it ends up being you know it's not like, advisable but it's really memorable I, i'll yeah. still remember i i edited the day of my yeah. video premiere like I, yep. I know i know what <laughs> know the feeling dude that's awesome yeah, yeah same i mean but it was really important though for me to have the guys here in town and you know if we had a, a couple holes or two you know we were we were doing a lot of filming that last couple of weeks also you know not just like editing so right. it was kind of like okay if you want to go get that thing let's go it's, it's now we're never full you know? never yeah yeah so yeah it was it was wild um a wild ride for sure I wish I, it wasn't so hectic because I like, I would be able to appreciate it more. Like so many people came to town for the premiere and like, it's like, I walk in, I'm like, Oh, Hey, Chris Moeller. Wow. Hey, Matt Hoffman. Like, I didn't know <laughs> we were even coming, you know, like, Oh, so Hey, Matt Hoffman. <laughs> yeah. Which is bizarre. You know, yeah. like, we just took the little six hour drive down and he was there. But so it's like, I didn't get to really like, hang out with people and enjoy them being there. It was kind of just like, Hey, how's it going? I got to go set this up. And I'm, like, freaking out. <laughs> I'm freaking out. Yeah. yeah. The, the laptop is still burning the DVD, you know, or, yep. or so it, was, it was pretty hectic, but I can, I look back on it and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really happy about the premiere and everything. It was, it was awesome that so many people came out. I just wish I could have been a little more present to enjoy it. You know? Yep. What was the most stressful clip from Anthem 2? Like anything stick out about like bangers or big jump or something that was a stressful situation? Like it was an amazing video with all those names. Like, thank you. Can you, um, can you think of, think of a clip? I don't know if I can think of necessarily one, one situation um, that was more like, stressful than others or m one trick. I mean, there was a lot of the Sean, Sean Burns. Burns that's yeah, what I was about to say. It's, it's scary. You know, there, I, I do remember the one, there's one clip where he, he rides off of a roof and then he ice picks down a handrail and it's like off this church roof. And I do remember him just having, you know, he was really struggling to either get himself to do it or something wasn't lining up or whatever. And I just remember him being on this, top of this church roof and he's like screaming <laughs> you know f the f ah, at the top of his lungs yeah. whatever he's screaming and there's like a playground like you know 100 <laughs> yards away or church you know, yeah exactly and i'm just thinking yeah the cops are i mean a lot of the situations with sean you're like the cops are going to be here any minute mm -hmm. like it's it's not like a question of whether or not they're coming 
it's a it's just a matter of when they're getting there yeah how much time like, do we have yeah when you're with sean and you're you're you know you ride into a campus or you're you know trespassing on someone's property like it, he already stands out like a sore thumb and the people you know people instantly watching what he's doing you know yep. so if he's getting it climbing up on a roof or whatever the case may be it's like yeah people pretty much have like you know nine one dialed and they're just they're, <laughs> like, yep hey there's some maniac on our roof screaming obscenities like <laughs> he's a caring magnet <laughs> oh yeah for sure I, yeah i i don't think we have a lot of people like really freak out on us but there were some there was always going to be some of you know? Yeah, but uh, yeah, so there were there were a, f a good handful of those instances with Sean where you just like, you know, but most of the time he would pull through and he would get it. And like that clip, he got it and he's literally like riding away from it. And the cop comes around the corner, you know, and the cop starts questioning us. And Sean's like, uh, I'm on the roof with my bike, you know, <laughs> like that sounds pretty absurd. And the cop would be like, yeah, I guess you're right. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> that's good yeah I and mean, we'd get a, we'd get out of a lot of those situations what's just, uh for yeah. like I, I, i've met sean i think i think at some in bike <laughs> bike event but what's what's he like for people who don't know sean burns how would I you mean, describe he's, him he's definitely a character you know he's it's it's oh he's always like making funny remarks or quotes movie quotes or whatever you know but he's a pretty chill guy like people think he's like just like some lunatic all the time you know and like they think he's like on drugs or he's just hammered but he doesn't even he doesn't really drink and he's pretty somewhat mild-mannered you know compared to what you would like assume he is you know right yeah yeah he's just he's a pretty chill dude yeah, a lot of that video like a lot of the trips with me and sean it was just me and sean like you know because you know he, he what he does is very it's a very like niche type thing you know like mm -hmm we're gonna pedal around a city for three days looking for something unique, you know, like, it's not like you get out of the car and you go to this spot and you find something for this spot, you know, right. Like he's looking for very unique setups. And that's something like a, a lot of, you know, and a lot of the other guys in, in the video, you know, some of them would ride street a little bit, but they're a lot more like trail guys and park guys. Mm -hmm. So they're not really wanting to spend a week just like pedaling around a city you know too much a few of the guys different would, Jeff slattery would do it you know yeah and, and it was fun but he's uh, so good too time. everybody's so good in that fucking video oh, man. Dude, it's so incredible crazy. incredible yeah all the guys are incredible speaking of filming one-on-one -on -one versus being with a crew which do you if you only could do one for the rest of your career which would you do go one-on-one -on -one with somebody or go with a, a team oh, that's a good question because like they both have their upsides you know like if you're if you're doing the one on one thing, it is really it's really like intimate, like you really yeah. get to know that person really well. You're just spending all day and all night hanging out with them, you know, pedaling around these cities and and working on this project, you know. So so that part of it is really cool. The mm -hmm. part that's not cool is when they get hurt, you know, like or they're or you're in a very dangerous situation and you might, you know, they're getting ready to do something that's potentially like super life-threatening or whatever you know right. which on the setups they're not they're not small you know <laughs> it's not friendly I mean, stuff yeah. i mean he looks for the stuff that is super dangerous you know mm -hmm. um so that's that is very stressful you know it's just you and it's him and your other cameras on a tripod and like you don't have a spotter and like are we going to end up having to go to the emergency room or whatever you know so that that part is pr pretty stressful yeah. um like the quality of the stuff you get is amazing, you know? And it's like, and of course it's like, it's a lot less pressure on you filming just one guy. Cause you know, when you have multiple guys on a trip, you want them all to like come away from the trip being like, Oh, I'm really happy with what I got. And mm -hmm. you know, hopefully they got a decent amount of stuff, you know? So if, you know, if you're filming four guys, you know, maybe there's one guy who's not really finding the stuff he wants. And, you know, he's just kind of, he might be bumming a little bit or, you know, sometimes you just happen to go to places that the other guys find more stuff. And it's just kind of, you, you just feel bad for the guy, you know, <clears throat> Yep. not as productive of a trip for them. So and you'd like for them to come away from each trip thinking that it was really productive. Yeah. I love the, I love the team aspect, especially when I was doing the Sabrosa stuff, like the celebrations after the clips oh, was yeah. so good. And then, yeah. But I really love the intimacy of the one-on-one. -on -one. It's so good. Yeah. Nice, you know. Yeah, they, yeah, they both have they both have 
you know, their upsides, but yeah, yeah that, uh, it's, that, that is the cool part when you have multiple guys, it's like the friendships that are being made, you know, and yeah. you know, the group stories and whatever, you know, the, the, the jokes. jokes and yeah, yeah, all that stuff. It's it, that's, it. That's priceless. So it's, it's nice to do both. That, that was the cool part about that, that project was, it was a lot of both of that style of filming. That's what's up. Yeah. Well, Anthem 2 is a great video, but you've done so much other shit since. So let's get into it, dude. <laughs> Anthem 2, Grounded, and props are all going on simultaneously. It's like 2006, 2007. What time is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, that, it was kind of, I think it was when the when the Grounded thing ended. I think we did a premiere in 2006 for that video. Anthem 2, 2006? No, the Grounded. I think Grounded came out in 2006, maybe. Oh, wow. Anthem 2 came out in 2010. Yep, 2010. So it would have been, I, I would have ended filming Grounded and started filming Anthem 2. Huh. There probably so, yeah. there probably wasn't much overlap between those two projects. Because right. just then I just would have been like, it would have been impossible to like juggle three, yeah, three three big you know full time gigs or or the props being like the semi full time gig, but with the other two projects. How so. much? How much did did you make? Like, were you making a living filming Grounded? Is that Grounded was actually, yeah, the best paying thing that I'd ever done. I mean, at that point, I, I got put on a retainer and I think nice a retainer, yeah, dude. Hell it yeah. was, that was really cool. I was like, wait, you're going to pay me even if these guys don't hit me up to go film me, yes. you know, <laughs> like that, that was super cool. And uh, you know, the, the prop stuff, I can't remember. I can't remember exactly what I made. It would have been like, you know, if a props issue came out, depending on how much of it I had done. And I probably made like maybe a few grand or four grand or, you know, hell like, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like a couple, it's like a few months worth of work, but for BMX stuff, you know, and it wasn't, I wasn't doing that full time, but that's like the props issues, you know, but then I would go on a road fools or whatever. And, and I would get little projects here and there. People would hire me to do some random things. I got Jamie Aaron hired me to edit a McNeil video, the first McNeil full length DVD and, you know, there there were other projects that came along, just small things here and there. But yeah, the Edney's thing that would have been like a couple a couple grand a month on the retainer, you know, or hell yeah, three grand a month on retainer. Yeah. Rent and that is was covered. Like, wow, I was like, like honestly, like because I got that that gig, I saved all that money from that gig, and that was the down payment for the house I bought in two thousand eight. Nice. Like I, I used the props money. Like props enabled me to like live and pay my bills you know yeah and then and then when the etnies thing came along that allowed me to save i you know i was all the prop stuff was going towards living and then that etni stuff i i saved up and that, that was just like i just put it all away and that that definitely helped me i wouldn't have been able to buy my house without that project it's a hell of a year to buy a house did you do it after everything 2000, 2008 yeah and i got the, at the end the, of 2008 the crash of 2008 did you do it after the crash or at the peak yeah when when exactly was the crash do you remember i don't remember i was 18 and not giving a shit about anything <laughs> i want to say maybe i bought the house in november september november let's see 2008 the fall of the market month real estate crash of 2008 time december 30th 2008 so you bought it before at the peak of the market then no I don't, I don't know. know. Whatever. This is your, you this is your house. Program. That's dope. Yeah, real not estate. really. I'm real estate adjacent. I <laughs> make social media. I'm taking a nice cinema camera and turning it vertical and making skits. <laughs> it's like the little, the younger like filmmaker inside of me is like <clears throat> dying every time I do it. But it's still it's fun. You got to change and adapt, man. Um, okay. 2008, you buy a house. 2010, Anthem Two comes out, and then I'm trying to remember if I can remember what else what was after that for you like, um for after it? that i i'm i'm terrible with years but i started doing some fit work yeah yeah like van homan had been wanting to do another fit full length you know mm -hmm. this is what the whole robbie colt split thing yeah. had happened and 2010 till the end <laughs> that's how you yeah. can remember so, yeah so van hit me up he's like hey man i want to i want to do a full length fit dvd you know would you be into doing stuff for fit i said yeah man of course like hell yeah iconic brand and like the guys that were still with the brand like brian foster and van and aiken mm -hmm. and uh, you know like i was like yeah i was totally down so 
I can't remember if that was like 2011 or when exactly it was, but, but they brought me on board to do a lot of work for them. And then sometime, I don't know if it was maybe a year after I started doing the fit work, I got asked to do a Dan's comp DVD too. Oh yeah. Like Scott Town, yeah. who, who yeah. was working at Dan's at the time. Nice. And, uh, and like Scott is such a, he's such a treasure to like BMX. Like, you know, guy was like, he was like, shooting photos and, 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 ed and editing magazines that I was looking at when I was like a teenager growing up, you know? So he was someone I totally respected. And, and he came to me with that project. And I was like, it's kind of hard to say no to, to this guy who I look up to and like just the riders that were on the team at the time, you know, it's like Nathan Williams, Dakota Roche, you yeah, know, stacked. Devin Smiley, <laughs> Stevie Churchill. Stevie Churchill you know? Yeah. 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 It, I mean, Shane Weston, I mean, the, it goes on and on Alex Magellan, like all these guys, you know? And I was like, yeah, I can't say no to like working with these guys. You For know? real. So, yeah. Yeah. So I was doing, yeah. So props had ended basically. I think the last prop stuff was probably, it was like road full 16, 11. 17 yeah which one it, or was it even 18 it was like the the premium and et, wait, premium and whoever one other team. <laughs> i can't remember i can't remember what it was yeah. but yeah it was it had, it had just run its course and you know obviously the kind of the dvd was like on its way out the door you know mm -hmm. part and and people just a lot of people just they just weren't consuming videos in that way you know they weren't buying dvds right. i mean I, I think i got really lucky with the anthem too just because it was kind of a special release type thing you know yep. but the prop stuff yeah it just it just kind of kind of went away, kind of went away unfortunately yeah 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 but it's so like the whole industry kind of went away with oh, the yeah, yeah. selling content you know like oh yeah yeah content. it's yeah, so tricky sure. to think about yeah it took, a lot of people took a big hit you know like brands like fbm like that was how they could afford to do team trips was because they made dvds and sold them you know right once once they couldn't sell those anymore they were just really struggling to even do team trips you know right. like unfortunately yeah. it's just a, you know unfortunate side effect of the the dvd going the way of the dodo bird you know yeah dude and it's so i like we we're going over these dvds that you've or big projects that you've worked on just like briefly talking about them and it's just thinking about how much actual work it is they i i explain to people who don't know bmx like hey yeah we go out all day and spend four hours trying this trick and maybe he'll get it and then that's five seconds <laughs> oh we yeah gotta, we gotta fill out an hour or however long the video's gotta be and they're yeah. like that that seems kind of dumb <laughs> yeah to your average person it's insane like it why insane. would you do that you know yeah. i mean luckily someone's paying me to do it. You know I mean? Yeah. It's, it's enjoyable. And, you know, a lot of the guys I'm working with on these projects are, you know, they're, they're professionals. So they're, they're, you know, they, they know what's up. They yeah. know how to go out there and put in a hard day's work, you know? Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a long and tedious process to do a team video. A hundred percent. Uh, so I, what, what kept you going to keep wanting to do that? Did you ever want to be like, nah, I'm kind of done with BMX. It's not worth it. Or, did you have those moments before these projects came, came around? I mean, I mean, there are some times when you, you, you know, you'll be working on these massive projects and it's pretty like overwhelming to think, you know, when you're a, a fifth of the way into making Anthem two and you're like, wow, we got to do a lot more trips. I got to find ways to get these trips paid for, you know, luckily a lot of the riders, their, their sponsors were helping get them on the trips. Yeah. And in turn, I would, you know, <clears throat> I'd put a sticker from the brand in the, in the DVD and they'd get a little watermark on the screen during the right. writer's part and, you know, a logo on a poster. So you, you had to really get creative and like, you know, give them their money's worth, you know, to get the guys on the trips. But yeah, you, you might go on a, you know, your whatever 10th trip into a project like that and you still have 10 more to go or 20 more to go. And you might have a couple of days where you, wow, we didn't, didn't really get much today, you know, yeah. that can be frustrating, you know, and when you're doing it, of course, you, you, you enjoy hanging out with these people and you enjoy the process, but it's not like, Hey, I get to go on a two week trip this year. It's like, you're doing the trips back to back to back to back a lot of the times. And you, you know, it really comes at like a huge sacrifice to your personal life, you know? Yeah. You're, 
I mean, I've done stretches where I haven't been home for four and a half, five months, you know, and yeah. it's just, yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> keeping like a relationship going or even just being like, oh man, I miss riding my local spot with my friends or, right, you know, or especially when you own a home, like, oh man, I got to have someone swing by the house and check on the house. Like it, 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 there are times where it's like, wow, this is a lot of sacrifice to do it. But at the same time, you love it. And that's why you got into it, you know? So you have to keep reminding yourself, well, this is fun. It is fun. It's it's more fun than it, than it isn't fun. Right. You know? Yeah. So, it is a dream job. You know, it's like the shit that you dreamed of when you were a kid. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, this wasn't even like, it wasn't even a profession when I was a kid. Like no one was yeah. making BMX videos and making a living and traveling, you know, like I didn't even, I didn't know it was a thing until like it actually happened to me somehow, you know, like, yeah. like, holy shit, I'm fun. doing it. I'm doing it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. It was, it was never like a thing like, oh man, okay. I'm going to, I want to try and get a job. Let me submit my application to props. Yeah, email, exactly. Email it was Chris like, yeah. It was, yeah, it was like, oh wait, what? You're going to pay me to go on that road trip? Yeah, of yeah. course. Do it, you know, like, that's dope. So, yeah, it, it's something, it's something, you know, you enjoy doing and you love it, but it comes at a, a big price, you know? For sure. What comes to mind when you think of big price? Like, did you lose a girlfriend or something? Uh, no, I mean, I didn't. No, I didn't lose a girlfriend. But, you know, you, there are rocky times where, you, you know, <laughs> I mean, it maybe eventually it might have led to that. But <laughs> but there's not like any one instance I can think of, you know. Okay, but yeah. yeah, it's just it's just it's just that thing of like, <clears throat> you know, finding, well, I can tell you the biggest sacrifice is like you go on all these trips and you're filming and you don't ride hardly. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, it's like, yeah, you're going to tell me I'm on a trip with like, you know, pick any of the five <laughs> yeah. badass bike riders at the time and they're shredding all day long. You know, you're like, yeah. you don't have five minutes to pick up the camera or to pick up your bike. And, and if I do, it's like, okay, I'm going to ride for 10 minutes and then it's going to be really hard to put my bike down. And then I'm going to be kind of shaky and a yeah. little sweaty and the yeah. clip's going to look like shit, you know? And it's like, you know, if someone, that's the thing is if someone's paying me to go on a trip, I, I want to, I want to be productive and I want them to be happy with, you know, what we're getting done. Right. So that, that is, that's the big sacrifice really. It's like, you know, what, what, do, what do people say? What's the saying? Like find something you love and let it kill you or whatever, you know, like yeah. something just like, you put so much of yourself into that, like, yeah. You, you I just, love that quote. That's a good one. Yeah. I love it. But man, yeah. the, the older I get, the more it just like rings true. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Like, we were texting know, earlier. You spending 10 hours behind the computer today or however long you said like, oh yeah. Yesterday it was crazy. And today it's like, I was supposed to, I, I was going to do like a solid like day of hammering on some editing and I didn't even get to do any editing. It was like, phone calls and emails and conference calls and like all this other stuff that just kind of like gets in the way, you know, but yeah, shit that, you know, like, I guess that's the thing. It's like, if you love it, you want it to be good, you know? So mm -hmm. you put the time in and there's no time clock, you know, you don't punch out. You're just always kind of clocked in, unfortunately. <laughs> right. <laughs> it never ends. It's a life, you know? It's yeah. Like, yeah. It's it, it is a life. life. It is a life for sure. So yeah, that's, that's probably the biggest drawback really is like, yeah. Man, there were a lot of times I was at really cool spots and it would have been so fun to pick up my bike and ride it for an hour and you just don't get to do it. Yep. I'm working over here. You're yeah. Just filming. That's it. When did you first go HD? Was it stay fit? No, it was not, not stay, fit. stay fit. What, what was the one you filmed? The Holy fit? fit was the Holy one I fit. did. Yeah. But I did my first HD camera was a Panasonic HMC 150. And standard, I got classic. yeah, yeah, stand, the yeah. standard. And I got that on a we did a Road Fools. Oh man, I'm trying to remember what it was. It might have been the the Etnies versus Kink Road Fools. I don't even know. I remember numbers. that one. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was the first trip I ever did with my HD camera. Nice. So Before that was, we... if I had to take a guess, that was 2007, maybe. <clears throat> that's that's around the, the HD revolution time. Yeah, yeah. The DSLR started coming into play. Yeah. I still remember it, like it it being a thing. Like, oh, sweet yeah. HD is new. That's cool. Yeah, because um, I still had two VX twenty one hundreds at the time, and then and that's what I used to film Anthem. But I know, like, towards the very 
Well, not it's like the last year of filming Anthem. I, I think I went on a big European trip and I was doing some prop stuff and a bunch of Anthem stuff. So I took one of the VXs and I took that Panasonic. So I used that Panasonic for like the static angle on the tripod, you know, nice. yeah. back up. but it was just like, Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't be lugging like three cameras around in a backpack in Europe, you know? Yep. So it was like Gotta I had light. One, one HD and one, SD. One thing before we get to present day or a little more present day is that did you film Garrett Reynolds props bio? I did. Yeah. Tell did me about that, bio. dude. Tell me about that legendary ass video. Man, I don't even I don't remember. I think I don't know. Do you remember they were there was this event? It was a like a Halloween trick or treat jam in Rochester. Yeah. Like I vaguely recall I filmed that. it for props. I think, oh wait, I might've filmed it for ESPN and maybe Walter filmed it for props or something. But we were at that event and Garrett was killing it. And I didn't know Garrett very well, but a little bit. I think I think I had got to know him a little more when we were shooting the, the Big Daddy Day in the Life for props. Yes. But I'm pretty sure Garrett was living in that house that Big Daddy was living in with like Augie, Augie Simoncini and a few other writers. Yes. And if Garrett, if Garrett wasn't living there at the time, he was hanging out there a bunch. So, so you know, maybe maybe during that, I might have said, hey, we should, you know, if you're into it, do a props thing or whatever. And he was probably like, yeah, okay. And then at that Rochester thing, I said, hey, you want to like, let's plan a trip. You come into Austin. Nice. And he was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. So, I mean, we filmed that thing in like two trips, maybe. Get maybe out of here. On the East Coast <laughs> for a few days. And then he came to Austin with J.J. Palmer for like, you know, maybe 10 days or whatever it was sick. And it was, yeah, it was like, it was quite a sight to behold, you know, like, yeah, I mean, no matter, obviously it's Garrett, you know, he's like one of the best video part writers of all time. And mm -hmm. no matter what spot we went to, he was like, okay, yeah, I got something. And it was not just seven twenty down this 16 <laughs> stair or what, how big was it? Pretty, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was just, yeah, that was a, that was a jaw dropping eye opening project to work on. And yeah. And just, you know, getting to work with Garrett, like he's just like so casual and he's just like so easygoing, you know, yeah. like he's not like he's not stressing anything, you know, he's not like he's just super laid back and, you know, whatever you're whatever, you're, wherever you're yeah. at, he's got something for it. And, and he's like not too fussed about it either way. And it's usually something pretty ridiculous. But. And he's not. Like, who are we talking about that was humble earlier? Mike Manzori. Just like, it's the yeah. same with Garrett. He's just a dude. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. just one of the dudes, but. Yeah, yeah. Whew, yeah, Garrett, he, he's the dude and he's just like, you know, I, I have to like, I have to give Garrett like credit. He is probably one of the most down for BMX dudes I've ever met. You know, like, Hell yeah. I don't mean that in just like a riding sense. I mean that in like, he, you know, if, if you're a friend of his, he is down to do whatever he can to help you out, you know, or he's got your back. Like we did this thing for uh real BMX. One of the years he was in it. And it was like uh, at the very last minute, uh, Apple came on board and they wanted to do like, you know, they just did some little, they wanted a little promotional thing where they wanted like, Hey, we want to, in one of these behind the scenes segments, we want to see someone using an iPhone to film, you know, huh. which obviously we don't usually do that, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, that's not what the show is, you know? Yeah, <laughs> filming on real cameras for real video parts, but so I was kind of in a, in a in a pinch, like where I needed to make this thing happen. The show was already pretty much all done and shot, like, and uh, so I was out in California, and I said, "Hey, Garrett, like, is there any way I can like pay you some money to come out for a day, bring a couple of the homies, and like, you know, you just film a clip or two of them on your phone, like, and just you know, we mic you up, and we get a couple sound bites of you talking about like." Yeah, when I'm out filming with the homies, we'll get something on the phone for Instagram or whatever, you know. And uh, you know, I told him, yeah, we can we can give you some money to do this, you know, for a day. Like it's, you know, obviously we'll we'll have it in the budget now. And uh, and he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, but just like give the money to the homies. Like I don't need it, you Hell know. Yeah. He's like, if this will help the show, if this will help you guys with the show, and like we can give the homies a few bucks, then like I'm down to just go do it. Hell you know? yeah, like, that's so sick. And I just thought, what a, you know, like, what a selfless dude. Like, he could have pocketed whatever it was, a grand or something easily in a heartbeat, blink of an yeah. eye, doing the same thing he does every day. Right. You know, but he wanted to see his boys get that money because he knew that they could use it, you know? So that was like, you know, like, 
before that i was always like a huge fan of garrett but even but even more so after that you're like right oh, he's the man like he's he, a good he just, dude yeah yeah, That's yeah. he just awesome. wants to see he wants to see his friends you know do well and like he was just down to make the show you know to for us to be able to get that support from apple for the show like he was just down to like see the show get that support he's like oh yeah if that helps with the show then like i'm down to do it like that's I believe, so interesting I that, in the show you know i'm so interested in like apple hits you up and then they don't want their logo or anything on the show they just want it like subliminal oh, yeah. marketing They're, yeah like, it, was, it was totally subliminal yeah that's interesting because yeah. i'd never thought twice about like did apple pay to have them film i thought that was just like them talk legit talking about it so well done yeah i mean it was yeah. a real natural integration because that's what yeah. everyone does is everyone really yeah on their phones you know so it's like it's not like we were asking him to be like hey check out this iphone <laughs> introducing you know, like, iphone reynolds <laughs> exactly exactly so it was it was a really natural thing and that's that's the thing with garrett too is like i know you know like i know he has a high standard like he doesn't want to do anything that's corny so i wouldn't ask him to do anything that's corny you know we, we try right. to make it as like natural as possible and well and done he was, he was down to do it and he had no complaints and it's part of being a professional you know that's exactly he is yeah. the constant professional he's just yeah. like down for the project he wants to see cool things happen and and if he can do something that helps you helps facilitate that happening you know like then he's down to do it that's sure. what's up what's so. it like making the tv show how did that come about that's a like wow it is a big it's a big project it's yeah <laughs> big scary uh yeah they came to me and i guess it was the beginning of well i can't remember if it was like towards the end of 2015 or the beginning of 2016 but i had been doing some contributing a little bit to the x games um the espn website is that through tunny yeah yeah through tunny yeah. i have known brian forever brian help do music clearance for props and like we just you know we we were good friends and we would hang out a lot at comps and stuff you know those 2000s and uh so he was like hey yeah if you ever want to do anything for the site you know feel free like random this project or whatever and especially since the prop stuff was gone you know it was like sometimes there would be a jam that was happening locally or something else yeah. that was you know happening that I could easily film. And, and he would always like say, yeah, if you need a home for it, let me know. And, and we'd do it. So I had done a bunch of stuff for them in that capacity. Um, and there were a couple bigger projects that I did for the website. I can't exactly remember the years, but, but they, they had been doing real street, which is the skateboarding show, you know, for maybe that started in 2010. I can't recall exactly 2009, or 2009 2010, um, and it was time for, you know, they were expanding and they were, do, you know, they were doing like a snowboarding one and, and the time came for the BMX one to happen. And it, and I'm, I know it was just Brian who said, you know, Hey guys, this is, this is the guy who can do it for us, you know, like, and I guess probably just cause I, you know, I'd worked with Brian over the years at props and, you know, never, never had any issues and always got my work done. And, and uh you know done team videos and i guess that's probably the closest thing you can you know equate to a tv show when you have these six rider parts you know it's like it's kind of like a full-length video right and you're doing the behind the scenes for it you know so anyways i had just done enough stuff for them i guess yeah you've spent had... fifty thousand hours behind a lens filming bmx i think you're ready for real real bmx <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just the fact I had done so much stuff and, and some stuff for them and I hadn't really goofed anything up too, too majorly, you know? Yeah. So he, he just told them to told them that I was the guy and they listened and they reached out to me and I was like, wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was, I was terrified. I'm not going to lie. It's like a, yeah, it's a very huge. overwhelming project. You're like, you know, we had done stuff from, for props that had ended up on like fuel TV, you know? Yep contest a metro jam segment here and there and you know they repurposed a lot of the prop stuff to be formatted for for fuel tv so i i had stuff that had been on television you know prior but just this thing was like it was basically like okay from the ground up you're like you're the you're producer the whole thing yeah yeah uh, the producer of the show technically like the sport organizer for that you know event because like when they have uh, any other event in the X Games, you know, back then it was like, 
if they were having a park contest or a dirt contest, you know, Matt Hoffman, the Hoffman Sports Association was the sport organizer for those, you know, so, so, and that entails, you know, a lot of the, basically I'm like putting my neck on the line to produce the show, like, you know, so. it, in the fact that I'm like legally responsible for, oh, shit. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, for uh, so-and-so is in the TV show and they jump off a roof and they destroy the property and the property owner reaches out, like, technically i'm i'm the one they're going to come to like i'm the one producing this show you know Oof, My, i'm yeah. delivering the show like you know x games they're smart enough to completely distance themselves from the, yeah. other than just like airing it it's like okay you're organizing it you're producing it it's they, on you yeah it's on me like we'll do the athlete i'll do the athlete invite and i would a lot of times i would have ideas and i would bounce them off brian tunney and you know and he would be like most of the time he was like yeah and he might you know, this guy, yeah, these, this is a great invite list, or he might have like a suggestion for a guy, you know? And mm -hmm. so we went back and forth a little bit on that. It was mostly my call, but I wanted to have Brian's approval and blessing, you know, for the invite list. And then I would just show that to like, you know, the, the producer I was working with at X games, you know, I'd say, Hey, these, these are the guys I want to invite. Here's some stuff of theirs that you, that you can see on the internet. And this is why I think they're going to make a great you know, a great contribution, a contribution to the show, you know, and most of the time, I mean, all the time they were like, okay, yeah, we trust you. You know, that, nice. that was the, that was the interesting part with producing those shows is I, I had always right when they came to me with it, I thought, man, I'm going to get micromanaged to death. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have someone looking over my shoulder. They're going to, they're going to be, no, you can't invite this guy, that, that guy. And they couldn't have been more hands-off. You know, it was basically like, okay, well, here's the, you know, the, the loose layout of the show. This is how the contest has to go. You know, it's this, you know, however many riders you choose, it was like, you can have like six to eight athletes or whatever, you know, and I, I wanted to go six because that means, you know, the guys are going to get the, the prize money is going to be more, you know, it's not giving, getting divvied up between two more teams. They're going to have more TV time in the show uh, the parts, are, their part is going to be longer because the skate show was doing 60 second parts with eight teams. Hmm. We did six teams with 90, 90 second second parts, yeah. you know? No. So, I, I, you know, because I'd watch some of those skate videos. I'm like, these are cool, but like, I feel like they're over before they even really get started. Yeah. You know, so I wanted guys to have, you know, more resources. They're getting paid more to do it and they can devote more time to it. And in the end, make a part that's better that they're more proud of because they they've had time to devote to it you know yeah. so so yeah that was that was really cool um i mean i can't exactly remember what i was <laughs> no so like the process of so you yeah, submit this as an email all written out yeah. with like a picture and a link to here's yeah. what they're doing and so, then so, yeah so it was like you know they, they were super hands off with that and basically it was just like oh yeah it was like this is kind of you know the contest has to go this way just in the fact that like these guys are submitting video parts and then you have a panel of judges judge them, you know, and then, mm -hmm. you know, other than that, however you want to do a lot of this stuff is really up to you. And, and they always trusted me on my picks, which was really cool. That, that's the thing I think that they were really smart about. Um, you know, when they do these shows, these real series shows that they're, they're hiring someone to produce it, who's in these sports you know mm -hmm. that's you know they hire a skate guy to do the skate stuff and then a snowboard guy to do snowboard moto etc you know so like they're smart enough to know like they're smart enough to say hey you know better than us who should be in these things you know you're a bmxer you've done it your whole life and you've done all these videos like you know we trust your vision for it and it, you know basically i would do the whole i'd get you know i'd get their blessing on the picks but they were always like they never question anything. And after that, I just run with it, you know, and we'd do the whole thing. And, you know, I would back and forth with Brian Tunney about it. And, you know, I always wanted him to kind of be involved and have some input on it. And, and then we'd film the show and we'd send them the screening link and they'd watch the finished show and they'd say, okay, that was cool. We might have to take this five second thing out. Cause we can't have someone say that on air or whatever. It yeah. was always a couple like minor, very minor changes, but for the most part, they just let me run with it. And easy which crazy. Was, yeah, it kind of blew my mind how hands off they were on the whole thing. I'm sure. curious about the actual shooting of the like judging and the shooting of the, you know, ceremony and stuff. Like what camera are you using? Where did you do it? Did you create a set? And what like right, everybody's mic'd up or like 
yeah, obviously, was, obviously they're mic'd up, but yeah, it was hired it was, people to do it. It was different <clears throat> every year for sure. Like first year, it was really, um, it was really kind of bare bones. There's this guy, uh, Xavier Mendez, who lives in California, and he's kind of like an old school, like lifer guy, like super cool. I was just asking him, hey, do you know any spaces we can rent in California to do this? And he's like, why don't you just do it at my house? You know, we did it in this guy's living room. And like, <laughs> nice. it was like, you know, me and Chris Rye and Brian Tunney's there. And, you know, uh, Christian, we hired Christian Regal to be one of the camera guys. Nice. And I, I think, and Mark Losey was a big help actually too, in the first few years. Like he'd done a lot of like um, kind of production work where he's like, you know, hiring a lighting guy and a sound guy. So like Mark was definitely instrumental in those first couple of years, first three years, uh, helping me kind of wrap my head around a lot of the stuff that we needed to do for this nice. project, you know? Um, <clears throat> and he's just low C. He's like, he's like the sweetest dude ever, you know? Yeah, like, shout out Mark Losey. Talk about yeah, legends. Always like just the worst, the worst jokes ever, you know, <laughs> yeah. jokes ever. But like such a, such a great dude to have around and and really like, uh, just really excited to help out. And, and so he was awesome, but so, it was like, you know, we did when we would do those, yeah, it was the first three years we actually did like, you know, the award ceremony where we had the judges all at one place and, and all the writers there. And, you know, it was like kind of a big production. Um, the, the, the following years after we kind of did it, like I wanted to switch it up, you know, the third year we did it in like an actual, like, uh, Texas Longhorn studio, like the Longhorn, like Texas UT football studio with that, that like, uh, you know, ESPN was like associated with, and they had a, it was like a full on legit TV studio. Nice. Yeah. And I, after that, I was like, I was like, I'm not going to get anything, anything better than that. Like a real legit TV studio. Yeah. And I don't want to take a step to a full step backwards. So I just wanted to switch it up and do the more intimate interview, the judges and their houses and like, you know, it's like you can get some really cool feedback when you have someone just one on one, you know, like you might have three judges at, at the like award ceremony, you know, presentation thing or whatever. You might have three judges at, at the table and someone talks about a topic and maybe this other judge was going to talk about that topic and have something say something kind yeah. of along the lines, but in a different way. But now he's not going to say it because someone else already talked about it, you mm -hmm. know. So it was like, it was really cool that way. Like, I think the judge feedback was like amazing. It's been good all years, but those years it was really, it was really nice. And it was like, it was nice to not have the stress of, you know, getting flights for 15 people and hotels yeah. and like, that's, it's such a huge you know, undertaking, you know, yeah. and, and stress. Yeah. Like it's, it's a lot, of, yeah, a lot. Yeah. You're spending so much money on one day and you're hoping everything like goes right. Right. It, it was, it was great getting all everyone together. That, that was priceless. Like the reactions, like with all the guys together, watching the parts for the first time, yep. that was like super, super cool. And I think that meant a lot to those dudes too, you know, yeah. but it was, it was nice to change it. But anytime we had done a shoot like that with like, a lot of people, you know, we were always hiring like a lighting guy and a sound guy, you know, yep. and so Full they, production. Were, they were handling that, but we always kept the cameramen were always BMXers, you know, and, and so, everyone organized and it was every, it was all BMXers. That's awesome, dude. It's, it's like, can't be said enough. That's just, it's so huge for BMX to get X games, real BMX. So you've done well and you know, like represented the sport really well. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It, thank you. It, it, yeah, it's an honor to be able to like work on a project like that, you know, like, you know, uh, just by, by if you look at it from the simple fact of like, you know, throughout the years, you know, you you might have someone like, I think maybe Edwin, you, know, you talked to, when was the first time you saw BMX? I saw it on the X Games, you yeah. know, or like yeah. I saw Dave Mira on the X Games, you yeah. know, and of course, that's not the type of writing Edwin ended up in doing, but it's like, you know, a lot of people got to see BMX somewhere for the first time. Right. Yeah. And, you know, Some like, kid is, like his dad brought him to a bar is like looking at the TV screen and sees X Games Real BMX. And it's yeah. just like, oh, maybe I can yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so so for me, it means a lot to see like that, that there, there could be a kid who's going to see BMX for the first time. And it and it's like something that's more kind of, you know, and I'm not knocking ramp riding and competition and all that stuff. It's all of it's great. You know, it has its place. But like, you know, I think a lot of us and probably a lot of people watching, you know, your podcast are like, 
they love street riding. They street love, dogs. Yeah, street dogs. Like it's just to them, there's nothing more pure than like going out and pedaling around a city and you know yeah. and enjoying your bike that way. You don't need a crazy multi-million dollar skate park, or you don't need like the most badass trails ever, like within riding distance, you know, yep. it's like, it's something that is like attainable for everybody. The street is right outside your front door. Yes. So, so for a kid who could potentially get into BMX to see such an authentic version of it, you know, on a television screen or computer screen, and that might be their first time being exposed to it. Like, you know, that that's for me, that's like a, that's, you know, it's a really, important thing i don't i don't know what the word is i'm looking for but i put a lot of pressure on myself to like make something really cool that th those kids can see you know and like and and you have these different representations of bmx you know like like if you look at the first year you know we have garrett reynolds who's like the man mm -hmm. you know he's winning every x games comp out there you have Van Homan, who's like the most legendary street rider of all time, you know, like yep. the king at filming video parts. And then you have Devin Smiley, who's like tech wizard, you know, yep. like, you know, so stylish. And like, and then you have a guy like Colt Fake, who comes from out of nowhere and he's just like jumping, he's like throwing Molotov cocktails and jumping yeah. off roofs. And he's just like, you know, like that, I think that's one of the things that's like, for me, it's so important because when I got into BMX, like when I discovered like what BMX really was, you know, I was already riding, you know, bikes around town and like, you know, always had a bike. But when I discovered what BMX really was, I, I would open up the magazines and I would see this guy, his name was John Diz Hicks. And he was like, he was like a freestyler and I wasn't necessarily much of a freestyler, but I was into heavy metal and this guy was like super into heavy metal. Like he was sponsored rider, but he had like crazy long hair. You know, he looked wild. He had like, you know, Metallica stickers on his bike and his whatever, you know, and, and I, I had long hair too. And I just saw this guy and I instantly like related to him because I didn't relate to like, you know, I didn't get into baseball or football or any of that stuff. Cause I just kind of didn't really relate to a lot of the people that were doing it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with those people, but I was like, they all had short hair. You know, I lived in like a small yeah. town in Indiana. So everyone was like either a farmer or a jock kind of, right. you know? So you were an outcast. Me, the, you were a yeah, heavy metal yeah, outcast. I was, I was kind of an outcast. Um, yeah. So to see another, a guy in the magazine and be like, oh, wow, I identify with that guy. Maybe not some of the other guys in this magazine, but this guy right. like, in particular, <clears throat> like I'm really all about what this guy is all about. Like, uh, you know, and, and just having something, you know, seeing someone that, that you can kind of relate to, you know, in some kind of characteristic, you know, like, oh. yeah, you know, like, you know, the, a kid who's into hip hop and he sees Chad Curley in real BMX and he's like, oh man, I can like, be into hip hop and ride my BMX bike and do technical yep. riding, or you see Colt fake and he's listening to punk rock and he's jumping off a roof and he has long hair and, you know, holes like, in I want to do that too. Yeah. 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 So I think that's like the most important thing for me is that, that people can see it and they can relate to somebody in that lineup, you know, that's like, Oh wow. I like what he's doing. And that might make them, that might pull them into BMX a little easier, you know, or, yeah make them yeah just make them relate to it and want to be a part of it so yeah like i said dude you've done good uh and you, you just did the most recent thing which i watched was the best of which was so dope to see, just see because like you don't realize holy shit you there's five or six years of this real street that is already it all happened like so fast and now just reflecting yeah. on all of it and jordan hango is so good dude oh my god yeah <laughs> yeah 36 video incredible. parts yeah, we, we in the course yeah. of the series, we've done six video parts each year, so we've had thirty. All videos. hammers, dude. Nathan Williams, like obviously, and Dakota killed it on the. Oh on yeah, the talking like I was so. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he did, it's yeah, he so did good on just he, like comedy. He hosted one year, the twenty twenty one. He was like, he was our host. Yeah, yeah, very good. And he's been he's been a judge multiple years. You yep. know, he's been a host, and uh, yeah, just like. That guy is the epitome of street riding, really. Yes, sir. Yeah. Epitome of a street riding professional, you know, For like real. goes yeah. out, puts in the time, the work, the love, the blood, sweat, tears. And for me, like, I'll get that guy involved all. with any project, you know, any time yeah. I can, you know. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. But my question that, is, that, is there something okay. coming? I interrupted you. Go. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's 
talk of bringing the real series back and it's kind of being worked on right now. So I'm hoping like for next year, I'm hoping that will happen. Cool. There, there Yeah. There is like a, a project that's kind of being, it's been, it's been hinted at a little bit on the X games, Instagram. Uh, there's a real street BMX best trick event happening. Oh, do Southern tell. California. Yeah. It's, it's happening uh, next, next month. Fuck yeah. Right around, right around the X games, but there's a lot of, yeah, I can't really give any, any details out right about now, but. So I watched, I watched the skate one that was just like at a school with permission and they were just skating a famous street spot and going, it was a best trick jam. And I was like, this is so sick. This is like, I think I watched it a year or two ago. And I was just like, I wonder if BMX is ever going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a cool <laughs> concept. I mean, especially like, I think for, you know, street riding is, you know, it's amazing. Street riding is amazing. Riding plazas is cool. You know, plaza events are cool, but like, I want to see like these guys get down on like what they really get down on, you know, right. like, you know, so like anything that, that you can have the a more authentic version of it. Right. Like I'm, I'm all about it. I think it's a step in the right direction for like street riding events for sure. I'm going to give a metaphor for it, but I don't want, are you still vegan? Uh, I mean, I try to follow a vegan diet as much as I can. I'm not like a, I'm not like super, I'm not like a hundred percent strict, but I've, I was going to say, it's like, like if, like, like if, like if my girlfriend makes a batch of cookies and she's like, Hey, do you want one of these cookies? I'm probably going to eat the cookie. I'm not going <laughs> nice. to have in it, but for the most part, yeah, I, I try to follow my, a vegan diet. My metaphor for this contest is like plaza riding is like a fake, fake chicken. And then the real, real street spot is a nice chicken breast, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, <laughs> But you vegan, man. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm actually, I'm like considering going vegetarian again. I did it for a little bit and I was like, eh. I, I, it would help, I think, uh, trim up. Anyway, that's a side note, whatever. <laughs> uh, what else are you working on? If we could, I'm so, so stoked that we got to talk about the X Games stuff. That was, I've been thinking about that all day talking. I was like, I can't wait to talk to Sue about the X Games. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. 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 So that stuff, uh, I'm still doing like a lot of stuff for fit and S and M. Yeah. So you yeah. just recently like re got reunited with them, right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess, uh, was it last year? I mean, it kind of, I, it, I was, I did a couple little projects for them cause it kind of makes sense. Some of those guys come here during the winter, you know, like, like, you have guys like Matty Aquazap and Tom Dugan and Matt Nordstrom that they, they live in Austin, you know, mm -hmm. but there's always, you know, Clint Reynolds is out in the winter is coming to visit and the Hallahan brothers and, you know, stuff like that. So they had been needing some more help, you know, like the Justin thing fell through mm -hmm. and they were like, Hey, you know, do you want to help out and do some more stuff? And I've always gotten along with Chris and Melissa really well. I've had no, I've never had any problems with them. So I was like, yeah, of course I would, I'd love to do some more stuff for you guys. You know, yeah. it's like, I enjoy working with, you know, all the dudes that they have on board and I love the building going, going to the building in California and seeing like, you know, all the people that work there and like, you know, them just putting out like super awesome quality stuff. Like, I don't know. It's kind of, yeah. it's, it's like an honor I, for me. It's an honor to do stuff for them. Like as far as a brand, like, you know, like, I just have huge respect for, for Chris, for what he's built with S and M and fit, you know, like to do those brands for so many years, you know, build them up from the ground up, you know, and, and have your own warehouse and your own machine shop. And you're doing so much stuff there. And like, right. I mean, all the BMXers employed, you know, people that work there and like riders and, and, you know, doing all this cool signature stuff with guys. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's cool. I, I definitely take a sense of, there's a sense of pride there for doing stuff for those guys. And tell and me love. about the young buck project. What was it called? The San Francisco thing? Was it like bucking in the bay or something? Yeah. Bucking in the bay. You, did you do that project? Yeah. 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 It was that really was well done. Cause it was like, it was, I like it when it's broken up into writers parts and I like it. You did a good job of like making it not a commercial, but like really plug in the, the products, which was yeah. well done. And the writing was fucking incredible. Like, but I can't help but think like, we got Stu, who's been in the game since 95. And then we got these 13 year olds, basically. <laughs> so what's it like? Yeah, on a no, trip? It, it was it was super fun. Like Melissa, you know, Melissa had, had told me 
for a little while. Um, hey, you know, we're working on these young buck frames and it's like, you know, the the Max Miller, Milky, Cole Volker. It's like a three-way signature frame, you a know, the generation. Guys, yeah, it's cool because those guys actually all agreed on they were all looking for a very similar geometry, you know. The, the, the new poppy cool. modern geometry is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, no. I, I don't know the details too much. Um, Me but, neither. but they were all looking for something, you know, almost identical. And it's funny because those three guys are the three different sizes. You know, Max is a little on the, you know, he's like on the shorter side a little bit. Milky's kind of like, you know, your average height. And then Cole's just like a giant. Yeah, so 20.5, 21. They have this, they have this three way signature frame and they all ride the three different sizes of the bike, you know, which is pretty awesome. But that's pretty red. Yeah. I so didn't, I didn't know it was the same frame. I thought it was all different frames, but yeah, it's like, yeah. it's like frame and bar, the fit young buck frame and bar. So sick. The, yeah. So Melissa had been telling me, Hey, yeah, you know, we want to do some kind of promo with all three of these guys, you know, when the, when the bike comes out, you know, would you be down to do it? And of course, you know, I'd, I'd never really spent uh, much time with Milky or Max Miller I had never really filmed with those guys. Um, but I'd done a couple of trips with Cole and he's like the nicest dude, you know, and, and shreds. And I was like, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do this. Like, let's, let's figure something out. And she's like, okay, well, they want to go to the Bay. So let's just do something, you know, we've Hell only yeah. got like four days or whatever to make it happen. So well, yeah, we went up there in four days and those guys produced and that's what we came away with. And dude. it was, it was fun because I wanted to, I, I, I did, I didn't want it to be like, you know, okay, we're making this promo, but it's three guys. I don't want it to be like a mixtape, you know, right. like, and they're, all, they're all on their different colorway bike. And so I was like, well, hopefully we get enough footage to like, you know, split them up. Something with, yeah. Split them, split them up and each give them like a little part and, and it yeah. worked out. You did really great. Cool. They did great. Sorry for calling you guys 13 year olds. I hope you're, I hope you're listening. <laughs> yeah. You better be careful. They're, Max they're, is like, Max is like yeah. the toughest dude I've ever met. Oh my God, man. Max, I don't want dude. no beef, man. I'm vegan. Dude. He, he, man, he put himself through the ringer. I could not believe that that guy was actually still walking at the end of that trip because yeah, uh, yeah not he a knock on him, but I had never seen anyone crash that hard. I mean, that's how much work he was putting in, you know, mm -hmm. uh, he, he got to love those guys too. The guys where it's like, Maybe it doesn't, it's maybe they're not the most natural bike rider, but they're going to, they're going to work their ass off and they're going to come away with something they're proud of, you know, and that's, that's like, that's some, that's someone I think of like a Brian Kaczynski, you know, like yep. who's just gonna by their own sheer willpower, they're going to make, they're going to make stuff happen, you know, and, yep. and that's super respectable, you know, like that's. Yeah, it, that's a hell of a compliment. Max yeah. Miller, Brian Kaczynski in the same sentence. Shout out Max Miller, dude. That's awesome. Oh, for sure. For yeah, sure. That's great. I was impressed with Max. And he's just, yeah. dude, I can't believe you're still walking. After <laughs> the first day, you're still walking. Let Are alone. You sure, you're all right. <laughs> yeah, it was impressive. Um, but that was, that was a fun trip. So yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing some more stuff with those guys at some point for sure. What else is cooking for, for them? Uh, is, is it, are you, are you like, on salary with fit or just no, it, it's just project. project based yeah it's just and yeah. it's just independent contractor project based um i mean they're really super cool about you know like when the x game stuff was kind of coming back around they're like hey we know that that's you know that's a good paying gig for you and you enjoy doing it so you know that, that's cool do what you got to do and and whenever you have time to squeeze us in we'll, we'll you know we're we're down to do stuff and yeah, nice. so it's a good program. They're super understanding about that yeah. kind of stuff, you know. I feel like that kind of makes sense for the where the industry's at right now. Like having a full time in house videographer is kind of, I don't know. That is, I don't. Can you think of one? I can't think of one. I don't know. I you mean, know what I mean, like, yeah. I who mean, has a full time filmer. Yeah, I don't know. Is Tony oh, film? I mean, Vish, Tony films no, a lot. Tony's Tony films a lot for Fiend, but he's not. Yeah. Oh, Tony, Tony Ennis. Yes, yes, yes. Tony Ennis. Tony, yeah. Tony Ennis might be the the last bastion of like full time, full -time brand filmer. That's <laughs> to think. Could about. be. Could be. Yeah. That's yeah, interesting. I'm not sure, but, but yeah, I mean, Vish was out there doing it, man. Like, yeah. But he's God, moved on now. Props a to Vish. Bit. Like, what yeah. a what a create you know endless endless treasure of like creative you know right? creative yeah. eye. Yeah, I love I love Vish. Coolest dude, and just like. He has like his own thing, you know, and like he's you so see unique, it, dude. Talking to him, like he's so unique. you know, yeah. like you can't yes. mistake, it, you know, for real. And but, I, I don't know what, it, like, he developed Colt's video style, and it's very unique oh, and like yeah. immediately recognizable, which is very cool. And the fact that he can produce his own music, I'm very jealous. I'm like, oh, dude, yeah, jack of all trades, right there. Yeah, can you produce beats? 
Can you oh produce God, uh, no. any music? No. You got what I'm are you? What are your other talents, Stu? <laughs> Do you have any hobbies, Stu? <laughs> nah, I can't think of any really. <laughs> I mean, the running, the walking, the running. Yeah, I mean, walking and running. For me, if good. I can ride my bike, if I get time to ride my bike, that's a treat. You know, like. Yeah. What's your favorite trick? My favorite trick. Ooh. Yeah. When was Stu in his prime? Ninety-five. What year? Oh, when I, when was I in my prime? Ninety-five. Yeah. Ninety-five was prime. Should I go and watch twelve oh one? Ninety-five, ninety-eight. I mean, I don't have any. I don't have a part in any. I don't have like a real part in any video. I think I had some small parts in like FBM videos, but that was like just a few clips that Crandall had gotten wherever you know, like along the way. I never like really actually filmed for like a part, but I mean, even I, I kinda, still, what are you most proud of? What's that? What are you most proud of? Clip wise. Clip wise, thinking back, I don't know. I used to do a bunch of the bar spins. I did like the bar probably, spins. I, I used to do a bunch. I, of oh the yeah, bar I, was, I was like, I was like the big bar. I was, I was way into the bar spin. So hell yeah. I think in like '96, I did a bar spin one way to bar spin back, like over on dirt jump. So I was pretty happy Damn. about that. But, bar but, bar back on '96, yeah, dude. That's yeah, fine. I, I mean, it was a hail mary. It was just like a <laughs> regular bar spins, pretty easy. But I had never done an opposite bar spin, and so I just like smacked it and hoped I would catch it. Nice. I've done a few of those, but, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if necessarily have anything that I'm like proud of stuff, but I end up doing That's good it. enough, man. The bar yeah, bar I, have a, I had a photo, I had a photo in a tread magazine that I was really psyched on, like a look back photo that Chris Holman took. And that was Sick. probably like, probably like the one thing where I'm like, yeah, I'm really psyched on that photo. Like, Hell yeah. I did that shit. I know my fire. Instagram somewhere, but yeah. It was fun. Scroll deep, go watch 1201. <clears throat> but I stay behind the lens more comfortable behind the lens what's been your favorite camera over the years the vx1000 i mean probably the 2100 nice that, that the not popular opinion but i'm with you dude i've never touched the vx1000 i yeah, love it i had a 1000 i had a 1000 but when i got it it was already used you know and at some point when you're using those things a lot it just kind of dies a slow death and it's a sad one, death i had a couple 2100s i loved them I, I, yeah i was really i mean that's when i did a little I was doing a lot of stuff with 2100s. Yeah. You know, like my, like the heyday for props, just like backpack with two 2100s. And I was like, if you kept all the 2100s that you've had, how many would you have? I probably only had like three or four, you know, but we nice. would, they would get, they'd get serviced every so often. Nice. Some, okay. Some would yeah. go out, get them fixed. And There's that, was a guy... the, that was the nice part about props is like, if I, if my camera was getting beat up, I would just like, I could send it in and get it fixed and Marco would handle it, you know? Hell yeah. I like that. It was good. I like oh. that. I have a FS5 that I use right now. Is that, what is that? Panas Sony FS5. Sony. Yeah. F but, FS? Mm -hmm. I've never heard of it. Sony yeah, FS5. I, mean, I think Navaz had one. Maybe Navaz had one. I know Peter. Oh, it's Adam a little camcorder. One. No. Yeah. yeah. No, I, Peter no that's Adam not a camcorder. No, that's not a camcorder. Okay. It's this oh. guy right here, which it's actually sitting next to me. Oh, nice. <laughs> that's a beast. But, yeah, but I'm not like I'm not like much of a camera weenie, really. You know, I don't yeah, get just to... film the shit. I, I I use what I have until it breaks. Yeah, you know, or if I'm or I'm forced, or it's so old that the technology is just like outdated. Yep. Have to update, you know. But... Mini DV tapes, man. <clears throat> it's just Ooh. so much time. Like so I, many, so many like glitches, I'm... so much time, so many glitches. I uh, my buddy Troy Blair. Oh, you you know Troy Blair? I know Troy. Um, yeah. He did a banger for Mediocre 2 and the tape fully glitched and I lost the clip completely. And the only angle that I have is from a cell phone, but it's yeah. better looking than the fucking VA. So it's still good. Yeah, of course. <laughs> like, oh yeah, God, I don't miss that, 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 that tail end of like filming Anthem 2. It was getting st stressful because I, you know, the, the tapes were starting to get glitch a little bit glitchy, you know, and I just yeah. was I was terrified. You know? <sighs> I, a, I don't recall anything getting ruined but i know like post video like after the video was done there have been a few times i popped some tapes in to try and find something and i had some tapes get like kind of chewed up a little bit yeah it's like it's it like, depends on what camera you're putting uh, it in that could chew yeah. it up and you never know if like one of these things are yeah. grumpy they might destroy a tape that i got you know <laughs> it's, yep. it's a nightmare yep. um dude we talked about your whole life let's um let's <laughs> talk about let's do the podcast questions <laughs> okay <laughs> What, you're what you're a listener here? you know them i asked you one i'm already. a listener what are we going with first are we going with the uh, mount rushmore let's let's go with writers that i don't know that i should know uh, writers that you don't know that you should know okay i 
I was thinking about this and I'm like, you know, I'm on social media and I already spend way too much time on my phone. So I try and I only really follow new people if it's something that I'm really like really psyched on or really impressed with, you know, yeah. but I try not to spend too much time on my phone in general because it's a time waster. Obviously. That's healthy. Yeah. So, but when I am on my phone, I, I want to see people that kind of like inspire me and, and half the time that's like older people that are still riding, you know? Okay. So like if I, if I want to go with somebody who, who I think is a good person to follow, do you know who Matt Copeland is who works at profile? Yeah. Matt Copeland, he's a profile team manager. He's a dude, and I don't, I don't know exactly how old Matt is, but he's, he's got to be in his early forties. Maybe yeah, I've been, I've I don't been know. Knowing about Matt Copeland my whole BMX life. Matt so, Copeland, but I haven't been following awesome. him. So he's oh, a yeah. dude who, in my opinion, he in in his older years, and I don't, I'm not trying to call him a geezer or anything, but he still is always pushing himself and always really actively trying to film good clips and like. You can tell that he's a dude that he sees a setup and he's like, I got to do something on the setup. I got to figure something out for the setup, you know? Yeah. And he, you know, he works a full, I'm sure working at profile, he's kind of like a, he kind of like does it all. You know, I know he's like the team manager and packing orders and doing a lot of stuff. Wears a lot of hats there. So it's like inspiring for me to see Matt take like time out of his busy schedule to make time to ride and like, you know, do stuff yes. that's like fulfilling to him and like learn new stuff. Like, and he's killing it, dude. He's riding like, how, he's old, how old are you saying he is? Oh, I mean, Matt's got to be, I'm sorry, Matt. If I, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to just say, Matt, I'm going to say, Matt, I'm going to say Matt's 40, give or take a few years. Okay, cool. Plus or minus 40. Maybe, and maybe he's it. 45. I don't know, but I've never that's asked great. him. He's very, he's very youthful. I think. How old are you? I am 49. Oh yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, I'll be 50 <laughs> in December, which is like mind blowing. That is mind blowing. Sure. Dude, I thought 30 was mind blowing and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm going to be around for a while." 50. Oh yeah. I remember I remember being like a, you know, 16-year-old and someone was on a BMX bike at our trails and they were like 22 and I'm like, "Oh my god, look at this geezer." <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty it's pretty weird to think that I'm that well, old. But I mean, but I mean like, you know, same thing we're talking about people to follow or whatever. I mean, everyone knows who Dennis McCoy is, mm -hmm. but like, how old's Dennis? 54, 55, maybe 56. He's still out there killing it. He, what, like, was that earlier this year or last year? He went on that trip to Columbia with Haro and he did the 360 down the like 10 stair or whatever it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that clip? Yeah. That I mean, that guy's 360. Really, he's so well sad. into his yeah. 50s and he's, he's still doing killer stuff like that you know what is his instagram Why can't uh is it dmc bmx yeah DMC, that's what it is bmx you know bmx dmc yep. yeah yeah well thanks yep. I, yeah i wasn't following him even though i should be yeah i mean talk about inspiration you know like yep. oh and there's another guy i don't know if you're familiar with rob ridge you ever hear of rob ridge uh-uh his instagram is let me see i think i wrote it down here robert ward his middle name ward w-a-r-d ridge r-i-d-g-e and i'm not sure i'm not sure on his age either he's got to be probably i would imagine around the mid 40 to 50 range huh. he's like a tech ramp rider guy rides for standard and the st i guarantee if you go on his instagram and you watch any any of his clips you're gonna be like what the hell like he is a dude who is like spending hours and hours and hours on single clips you know, mini ramp clips, street spine clips, whatever, trying to do. Robert Ward team. Ridge. Yep. Robert Ward Ridge. W-A-R-D. W-A-R-D. R-I-D-G-E. Huh. Yeah, I'm not seeing him. It's not coming up. Dang. Oh, well. Let me, let me double check it. But <laughs> yeah. anyways, like, like, just like the most insane, crazy tech combos, like, you know, front brake. Sick. Yeah. I love seeing that. This is a fun angle of it because usually it's dudes telling me about like younger kids that they're following. This is sick. I like this. Educate me, Stu. All right. Man, I had it up earlier. Now I'm struggling to find it. He's got a great name, Robert. <clears throat> yeah, maybe maybe he knew. He, he's very he's very underground, so maybe he knew this was going to happen in... Uh... <laughs> It's like, I don't know. Oh, okay, here we I go. I, I figured it out. I figured it out. It's Robert and then R O B E R T 
Mm -hmm. And then there's an E D Edward. Oh, it's Robert Edward Ridge. Sorry. Robert Edward Ridge. Oh, okay. Edward Ridge. Boom. You could, Re if you want, you can edit Reverted out the five minutes of me <clears throat> around for his Instagram handle, but no need, dude. We keep it raw, dude. But check it, check a clip of his or something, man. All right, let's go. He's he's. It, it's just super inspiring to see. For me, like I'm inspired by younger guys, but I'm I'm inspired by older guys who are like still out 100%. there. Hundred percent. Yeah. Oh shit! Cool. Yeah, that I mean, red, it's, dude. dude yeah. It's it's really. You don't see people ride like this, like the yeah, stuff doing. the backwards nose males. Yeah, with I the mean, it's like, with it's the, like the Midwest, Midwest Ooh, look at, style yeah. riding, but it's like super impressive. But and there's a healthy mix of like flatland stuff, like mixed in there too. Just total freestyle, you know. Yeah, that's so dope. Yeah, but right. there, there is also too though. You're you're asking for younger riders, and there's a kid here in Austin that I met recently, and uh, his name is Ford Chilton. That's a that's a fun. I haven't heard of Ford Chilton. It's a good name. It's Ford underscore Chilton. And he, I just met this kid in passing at the pump track one day. And then there was a little trail jam at these uh, best side trails in Austin, like where there was a little jam. And he's probably like nine or ten. And he's not he's like twelve. Yeah. Well, is he twelve? Okay, sorry. As in his bio. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Ford. Didn't mean to like give you the make you sound Ford, you baby. But but, but he's <laughs> like he's like you know he's not like some phenom rider like where he's like this young kid doing like backflip tail whips at 10 years old. He's just like real simple riding. But like I was at the pump track one day and he kind of handled, handled this little transfer that I was kind of sweating and he did it like without even thinking and then like stylish. And he's just he seemed like a really nice kind of soft-spoken kid, like really humble. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't know, there's something I'm just like, shout I out for Chilton. You know, some, yeah. Shout out for Chilton. Sometimes you just see someone and you're like, you have a feeling that you're like, okay, this is cool what they have going on. But you can just kind of see it like evolving yeah. into like something, you know, like maturing into something really like kind of special. You just, yeah, I don't know. It's I really wish that I could be doing 180 toboggan bars when I was when I was 12 years old. Exactly. <laughs> Ford's got Stylish a good too. future. If he if he loves the shit and he keeps going, then yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Thank so that you. stuff's inspiring yeah. to me too. So that's a good give me one more uh old school that I that I need to be paying attention to or learn learn more about. I mean, you've interacted with everybody. Like we brought up Mike Mike Tag earlier, but mid, yeah. maybe a Midwest old classic or a friend of yours from back in the day that is legendary I should be uh learning about or what Well, yeah. I'm not, I'm not even sure. Let's see if he's on Instagram, but you know who Chris Hallman is? I'm embarrassed to say I don't know. Okay, Chris Holman. He is uh, probably one of the most underrated BMXers of all time. He did Tread Magazine with props for a few years. Amazing photographer. Went on a bunch of road fools. Used to ride for Standard. But his his Instagram handle is Hall, Hall Person. Per Hall Person. That's I found Chris. him. Yeah, Christopher Holman. Yeah. All right. So like. He he's a shred, he's a total shredder, but he's like very humble. So I don't know that you're even gonna really see any photos or footage of him riding on his Instagram. Yeah. You'll see a little bit, but if you go back, um, if you go back a ways on his feed, you'll see a lot of amazing BMX photography throughout the years. Like just incredible photographer, big contributor to Dig and even some ride stuff back in the day. But just like very humble dude and interesting dude, but. Hall person. I love Hall it. person. Chris Hallman. Chris, Chris Hallman. How'd you meet him? Um, I met Chris from going to actually it was 1994 and I was going to this contest in Florida park contest that play clothes was putting on. And um, I was going to Pittsburgh to pick up a couple of my friends and they're like, Hey, this guy, Chris is going to come with us. And then I went to pick up my friends in Pittsburgh on the way to Florida and, and Chris Hallman got in the van with us. And after that, I was a fan. How many hours do you think you've spent in vans? Oh my God. I don't know. I put 300,000 miles on my last van. <laughs> so, and that, that's just my van. That isn't like <laughs> rental vans or team vans or anything. Yeah. Sheesh. And, and I retired that like four or five years ago. What are you rocking now? You got a van? Yeah, I got a Ford Transit. 
The cool. 2018 Ford Transit, the big boy. It's like necessary. It's part of your job to have a van. Yeah. I kind of miss having a van, dude. It's yeah, I haven't needed that as much as I did in prior years because it's just like I haven't been doing a lot, a lot of like driving my van, this van around the country. Like when I was doing prop stuff and all these other projects for people, I was like, I was driving all over the place. It's funny how I, the, the reason I got that van is because when that Etnies grounded project came along it, in my contract, they said, Hey, you know, if you need to use a vehicle, we'll pay you, what do they call that? We'll pay you so much per mileage that you put on your own vehicle. Nice. And yeah. I thought, well, I'm going to need to drive across the country multiple times. So this is going to help me buy a van. So that helped me buy a van that, that basically nice. I bought that van. And then like within four years, five years between using it for like, you know, all these different projects, it basically paid itself off, you know? Yeah. Like, props, props, like if we had to, <laughs> do a props road fools. We usually we would have the, the bus and we always have a chase vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the chase vehicle, you know, to get the shots of the bus and whatever. And if, if there's a small group that wants to break off and go across town and hit something else up, you know, so they would always have to rent a van. So Marco's like, well, if you just bring your van, I'll just pay you the money I was going to pay a rental company for the van, you know? Yep. So like I'd take my van on a props trip and I'd make a thousand dollars for 10 days for using, my van, you know, <laughs> so like, sick. So yeah, it worked He's, out. You're a hustler, Stu. You're a hustler. I love yeah, it. I didn't, I didn't plan on it, but it just ended up working out working that way. Out, so. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, I wasn't going to complain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Let's do Mount Rushmore, huh? Oh, man. That's a tough one. It's such a tough one. You well, know, it's the first three, question. for me, the first three are super easy. Okay. Matt Hoffman. Okay. Matt Hoffman. He, I think he brought, you might be doing the correct answer. Go on. <laughs> he brought he brought BMX freestyle back from the dead oh. in the early in the early nineties when there were no magazines and all the you know all the big brands were like not even the big brand all the small brands were dead and a lot of the big brands were not very interested in doing BMX stuff anymore. You know, Matt took it upon himself to buy an eighteen wheeler and tour the U.S doing sprocket jockey shows single-handedly like showing people what bmx was you know like hell yeah like morgan wade the first time he ever saw like real bmx in person he saw matt hoffman doing a show at the texas state fair wow and he was like i want to do that which wow. obviously it shows it shows yeah. morgan wade you know yeah That's so yeah, matt, matt yeah. is just like i don't know that anyone has like sacrificed more or put more of their blood sweat and tears into to bmx than matt hoffman hell yeah so and he's the the nicest dude ever like so he's, he's my number one what was number your first two? time meeting him before you go to number two? First time meeting him i met him in i did meet him in chicago at the, he had a he had a series called the bicycle stunt series bs series bicycle stunt series mm -hmm. in the early 90s and i'm pretty sure that Matt doing this contest series was one of the main like sparks that ended up starting like the X games. Like, I'm pretty sure, I think it's safe to say that without Matt Hoffman, you know, maybe there would still be an X games, but I doubt it. And if the, and if there, even if there still was, it wouldn't be the same, you know, like I think they, I think they, they got a lot of inspiration from Matt doing his contest series. I didn't know that. That's fire. I like that. I think so. I mean, that's my opinion. Maybe someone else is going to say you're way off base, but that's, no. that's what I think. In my I mean, opinion, Stu doing... Johnson is always right. So, <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah. So Matt Hoffman, you know, he's the man. He's done. He's done oh. a lot for BMX. But you, you didn't tell me how you met him. You, um, met, him, you met him in Chicago. I met him. He was doing this contest series, and, and he had the finals were in Chicago Scrap Skate Park in '93, '92 or '93. '92. He did it a couple of years. I think '92 was the first year. So I probably met him there. I knew he was a big Evil Knievel fan. And somehow my local bike shop had this somehow left over from like the late seventies or something. They had this Evil Knievel seat hmm. just like in the back of the shop that was collecting dust. Nice. And I knew Matt was a big Evil Knievel fan because I read it in a magazine, you know, Yeah. which makes sense. Matt was like killing himself doing all these right. stunts. Like yeah. you know, that's what Evil Knievel was doing. So I bought this seat for 10 bucks and then when I took it there and I showed it to him and I was like, 
check this out. And he was like, Oh my God, you know, what do you want for that? And I think I, I think he just traded me like a Hoffman bike sweatshirt or something, but I was like, nice. stoked to be able to give him that little, you know, that little evil Knievel trinket thing. That's you know? sick. So that's where I met him. I'm sure, you know, he, I don't know if he would remember that it was such a quick passing thing, you know? Right. But other than that, I can't remember exactly, you know, probably would have been like going to like contests and running into him here or there, or like, you know, I don't know, maybe him coming down to Austin. I, I don't know. It's, it was, it, or it could have just been the props thing. Like I did, I did some work for Matt. I helped him film one of his videos, like a, a couple, like shortly after I started doing the props thing mm -hmm. and, and I would go up to Oklahoma for a little bit at a time. And I didn't know him that well, but we became good friends really quick. And yeah, he's a sweet dude. People who don't like the younger generation who doesn't know Matt Hoffman's like story and everything that he's done should probably look into it i need to like refresh my memory on matt yeah. hoffman's like life story and how much he's done is incredible I yeah it's mind, it's mind yeah. blown i mean he's yeah. got the book i can't remember exactly what it's called the ride of my life is that i can't remember that sounds right and that could be it and then he has a uh, that espn 30 for 30 documentary the birth of big air birth of oh big yeah, air. yeah 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 because i mean look yeah if it wasn't for matt there would have never been the big ramp yeah that, that games would be a lot different without that stuff too Dude. Okay. That's, I love the evil Knievel seat story. That's how you met him. Anyway, <laughs> number two, number two, Chris Moeller. No shit. Cool. Chris the mad dog Moeller. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say right now, Chris is my, he's like my all time favorite rider for sure. Oh yeah. Just like growing up, uh, he was like, a, he was a test rider for BMX action magazine. And that was like the magazine that I had like worshiped, you know, when I was like, 13 14 15 and and i just couldn't get enough of it and he was a test rider in there and like he was they just always had these wild photos and you're like there's no way he pulled that you know like so, yeah. but you never knew because it was in the magazine it wasn't like <laughs> you know but but he was you know incredible dirt jumper uh and he was just kind of a rabble rouser you know he was a rebel like you'd always hear the stories of him in the magazines like causing a ruckus at the races and nice. you know sanctions and the organizers they always hated him because they were kind of the riffraff and you yeah. know always causing trouble like character and, uh, and just like and then him starting s m you know it's like yep and at that time you know so many of the brands are just like squeaky clean image and like you know snm was like the dudes were into punk rock and they were wild and they were sleeping on floors and like they were going on trips with like 15 bucks to their name you know they weren't mm -hmm. they weren't getting flown to the races by their sponsors and rental cars and hotels like they were doing it because they loved it and they were doing it with like minimal resources you know I wish I, I could like, go back in time and like witness that you know yeah that stuff. It, was, it was really cool and chris was just yeah. like you know, he, like I said, he was, he was an amazing dirt jumper, but he was one of the first guys I ever saw probably do a handrail too on a bike, you know, nice. like he was definitely like a street kind of a street riding, you know, like a, kind of like a soul street rider, like pioneer, like lots of wall rides and just like jumping shit. And, you know, so. like, like bringing and bringing some style, you know, like, cause obviously the racer guys usually had more style than the freestyle guys. Mm hmm. So he was just like, I got that racer bike control. Dude. Yeah, he, crazy. He, he, he definitely had like some good style, but it wasn't like too polished. It was always wild. And he was always kind of like, you know, on the you're on the edge of your seat, like watching stuff he was doing, because half the time he was just going to eat shit, you know, but yeah, the other, what, the other half, he was going to pull something super awesome. What video should I watch of Chris Muller? I what mean, I don't even know that there was like a real video that like showcases what Chris did, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's got a little part in BMX Inferno, but at, at that point in time, s &M was really starting to grow and he was probably having to spend a lot of time devo devoting it to like the brand and growing it, you know? Yeah. And, and just running a business. I can't, you know? dude, I can't even imagine trying to start a BMX company. And I mean, he started s &M when he was like 16, 17. That's crazy. And it's crazy. still going strong, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. That's That's one of those things like, I mean, it's the same with Matt, you know, like when I'm hanging out with them or doing a, doing a project for them or with them, I'm just like, at some point I just be like, holy shit. I can't believe like <laughs> I used to just look at these guys in the magazines, you know, yeah. and now I'm like in their house or like yep. talking to them on the phone or something. It, it is, it is weird, but it's like, they're, 
you know, they're just like awesome people. They're everyday people, you know, like yeah. you always kind of put those people on a pedestal, but it's like, it's a good reality check when you meet them and they're like down to earth, you know? Yeah. That's your inner 16 year old. I I've still have yeah. those moments of like, holy shit, dude, I'm talking to Stu Johnson, you know, or whatever, <laughs> whatever the moment is. Cause I, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's cool. And everybody is just a person and, and you kind of learn that. I'd love that about BMX and how, like, I got to meet people that I like idolized. And then I got to like have that life lesson of like, oh yeah, everybody's just a person, you know? Oh yeah. 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 I mean, that's yeah, the coolest thing. Yeah. It's the coolest thing about BMX, you know, it's like, if you love basketball, you don't go down to your local court and see Michael Jordan or whoever, you know, <laughs> you're struggling to name this, a basketball player legend. right now. It's hilarious. But like you, you know, but you yeah. go to whatever Linda Vista or whatever park on whatever day and you see Garrett Reynolds there riding or Kevin yeah. Peraza or Gary Young or whoever, you know, like these guys that are just like they're iconic top by the game. Right. Yeah, they're at top of their game. But then they're, you know, they're just at the just park a dude at the skate park time. just a right. dude you know enjoying themselves maybe working on a trick like you are and you know more often than not you can just have a cool conversation with them you know just yep. chatting on the deck or whatever you know while you're freaking out inside i remember the my first one that i freaked out about was casey badger we went to good yeah. i went to goodyear skate park and i'm sitting on my bike and casey badger's right here and then i'm just like oh my god that's casey and he goes and airs the hip and i'm just like, so sick anyway number three number three <laughs> Taj Mahalich. Nice. Excellent choice. Yeah. Um, I mean, if people know, they know. Like, Right. <laughs> I mean, I say, I'll, I'll say, you know, Chris is like my favorite rider growing up and then still one of my favorite riders. But Taj is like everything I, I see, everything I've ever seen Taj do, I'm like, damn, that looks cool. And I bet that feels good doing it. You know, like yeah. – it's just, and he has like his own signature style that you can't even like, it's like super aggressive, but it doesn't look forced. You know, right. you're, you, you would see Taj ride and you're like, he's getting something, he's getting something out, you know, like, like he's getting something out of him that he needs to get out of him while riding, you yeah. know, he's like, he's like taking out any frustrations that he may have on the bike and that poor bike is going to, take a beating. <laughs> you know, the bike's going to take a beating. The ramp's going to take a beating. He's going to take a beating, but he's like the most soft-spoken nice dude of all time. You know, that's, like, yeah, that's where he's getting it out. You know? Yeah. Just, I, I, yeah. I was roommates with Taj for a couple of years and, and I, I, I would struggle to find something bad to say about him, you know, like, hell yeah. He's just super thoughtful. You know, he might, he's that guy that you, Maybe you, in passing, you said something, oh, wow, man, I've really been looking for one of these things, insert whatever it is. And three months later, he's like, hey, I found that thing you were looking for. I just found one and I got it for you, you know? And you're like, nice. you remembered that? Like, yeah. you know, that that's like- yeah, Considerate kind of, Taj. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, considerate. I like that. And just, yeah, and just like, yeah, was, I don't know, his style is like, it's unmatched. It's What is the, for somebody who- you know, a young kid, Taj, that they're like, yeah, I know Taj is great, but uh, what, where would you point them to? What, what do you I think would is tell Taj's them, best? Yeah, I would tell them to go watch his Etnies forward section. Yep. I think that would be, that's, yep. I yep. mean, yep. that's like the pinnacle of it, you know? Yeah. Like, and, and I mean, and on that note, like, I don't know if you're going to ask, but probably one of my favorite clips that I've ever filmed ever there's a clip of him in there where he does the curve wall ride, the table out into the street. It's like yes. at, the, yeah. at the Austin like blind school curve wall. Mm -hmm. And I got to film that clip. And it's just like, he is just hauling bananas past the camera to like <laughs> Mach 10 and just hits that curve wall ride. And he is just stuck to it and then just launches out of it. And like, I had never seen anyone. I may have seen someone play around with a curve wall ride a little bit before that but I can't really remember seeing one and, and to see that's I've never seen anyone pedal at something that fast. Like it's so crazy it. to think about just yeah. pedaling. He's like, wall. he's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to go really fast and run into this thing and I'll just stick to it. <laughs> I was less like, uh, show me, you know, like, and yeah. it kind of, it did kind of blew me away. Like he did it a few times and then like we watched the footage and I was just, I was so happy with it. It just like, it's just such a cool clip. It's so cool. It's not, I don't think I filmed it anyway. That is like 
awesome, but I think it's just, I think I got lucky and I kind of like captured what it was, but it's just like such a amazing, like, like what Taj, the trick is itself is going to be cool, but the coolest part about it is him cranking it at whatever he's cranking at, you know, cause he's yeah. just got, he's just cranking at something with, with authority and you're like, Oh man, it's going to go down right now. So hell yeah. <clears throat> I've never he's, gotten to do a curved wall red. Have you done a curved wall red? Uh, a little bit here and there, but I've never been like, I've never been like fully committed. And just Dude, like, it looks oh, like it man. feels so fun, but like yeah. I'm too, yeah. too shook. And I think it's, I think it is one of those things. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like the faster you go, the easier it is. Right. Yeah. But and scary, like, the more dude. timid you are, the more you're going to get, you yeah. get racks trying it. So I just like, slowly hop into it. No. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's one of those things. You just got to trust yourself, but I'm not that trusting. <laughs> Me life. neither. Uh, all right. So we, we got through your easy three. Who's number four? This is, yeah, this is, this is this fun. This is the top part because I knew those three, like without a doubt, but there's yeah. like, Four could be so many people. Anybody. <laughs> yeah. You get a unrelated, you know. uh, not Mount Rushmore. Who do you think is the goat of BMX? The goat of BMX. That's a another weird it, question. It is so tough because there's obviously different facets of BMX, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's where like that's where like my number four pick, that's where I have the problem because it's like you had like, let's say you have someone like Van Homan, right. who is arguably, you know if you're going by impact like i don't know if there's another street rider who's had an impact like van homan has had you know like when when he inspired you know, a generation exactly i mean he, he not he not only inspired guys to like do gnarly stuff riding street but he inspired a lot of people to go out and specifically film for video parts you know like yeah like in anthem one i had there were some video parts in there it was a video parts, but it was like, we were just kind of filming the riding guys were doing and no one was like, Oh, I got to be laser focused on this video part. You know, it was just like, yeah, there were some gnarly moves, a few gnarly moves, but it was a lot of like casual, just fun everyday riding. Yeah. But when van came along and, uh, you know, seek and destroy came out. And then a couple of years later, you know, criminal mischief came out then people were like, Oh man, I, I didn't see what I got to do now. You know, yeah. like if I'm going to be a professional writer and I'm going to put out video parts, I got to step up my game. I got to take this seriously, you know, and like yeah. actually like, you know, be very deliberate with what I'm doing. You know, I want this for my part. I want this style trick. I'm going to go out and get this and, and, you know, this he, spot he, with this yeah, song. He just, like it's yeah, he, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So he just like, he stepped up the progression like years, you know, with, with those two video parts. Yeah. So it's like, that's commendable, you know? And like, even like when we did Holy fit in 20, what did it come out in 2014? I think that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was like, you know, he still had a few years left on his career, but he knew he's like, this is the last video that I'm like going all in on the last part. You know, so it was at the tail end of his like professional video part filming aspect of his career. And he got a, he got a Norcup for it, you know, mm -hmm. in 2014, you know, I don't remember what year. I mean, so if I don't remember, I don't remember what other years he got Norcups, but you know, I, I think there was easily a 10 year span between him getting his first Norcup and his last Norcup. Yeah. So it's like for, for someone, a pro rider to have that kind of longevity and especially in the realm of street riding, you know, For real. it's pretty amazing. It's that's, that's a, that's something to be, you know, given all the accolades you can throw at it because it's, yeah, it's, it's gnarly. So Staying you're saying Van is number four, huh? Well, Van, Van's up there, you know, it's like, okay. You know, it's like you could, you would really put him in the same category as someone like Brian Foster, you yeah. know, who, who was a professional racer, top professional racer, won the X games in dirt jumping. One of the best trail riders of all times. Like, had done put out street riding video parts and also yes. had a career that spanned you know i mean long Brian, career his career spanned 20 years over 20 years and you know he's a doctor now. i mean that was <laughs> his, his career probably yeah it was probably close to 25 years really it's incredible yeah, and he's a doctor now you know so the guys like that <laughs> general rich you know guys that have just contributed so much to bmx there's a, you can take your pick there's and you know there's a million yeah. of them so 
Uh, so, so what are we going to do here, Stu? It's I'm trying to weasel my way out. <laughs> Ruben. Ruben. That's a good choice. Same thing. Same thing with Ruben. Oh, Ruben's he, he, he changed the game. What about all those gap to wall rides and yeah. like, you know, and just kind of reinvented his style a few times. And like, it was badass every time he did it. Yeah. When he came over here, he was, he was like on a front back brakes, gyro, four pegs, you know, like riding a, riding for Huffy at the time. So then before long, it's like, you know, two of the pegs fell off the, you know, like the front brakes fell off. And then he was like a style God and, you know, then all the gap to wall rides and like, yeah. and everyone else started doing that, you know, like he, he was a guy that he definitely set like a lot of trends that people tried to follow after he would do, you know, after he would do this stuff. I once paid a hundred dollars to have pedals with his name on it. So yeah, <laughs> he's incredible. I remember the bike yeah. shop laughing at me, like, "You're really gonna buy these pedals? They're a hundred dollars." I was like, "I had a pair too, but luckily yeah. I got hooked up." A hundred dollars was a lot to me back then too. It's like Dude, it seventeen, is. It is. yeah. It a lot. <laughs> well, your Mount Rushmore is just eight eight heads. So yeah, I mean, it's it, it really is. is possible. How about this? Pick your fourth has to be a current rider that uh, is under thirty five. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's a good question. Can I, can I pick, he, can I pick someone who's like right now they're like really starting to come into their own and yes. I see them in the future. REA yeah. Levinson, that kid, cool. REA, REA, Ripe Life from Portland. Ripe Life. Right yeah. yeah. I think I follow Ripe Life. R Y P E or no R I P E R or L Y F E, right underscore life. Right, yeah. R, -R, 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 -R A. Yep. Sixteen okay. year old, sixteen year old kid lives in Portland, Oregon. Writes for S and M. Hell yeah! All right, shout out R A. He's on the Mount Rushmore he, with the big he, dogs. He's a, he's, <laughs> that I, I hope that isn't Let's too much R -R to live up to R E A. Let's he's he's the future contender for Mount Rushmore because he's just like. First of all, he's 16 and I just spent like two weeks on the road with him. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Like not a single complaint. And he looks at his phone a lot. You could, you could probably look at his phone a little bit less, but he's 16. So I'll let him have that. But <laughs> he's like, he's got a super right on attitude. You know, he's like very laid back, very cool. Like doesn't stress out about anything. Just wants to ride, have fun. He's not like concerned with like, you know, coming up and getting popular and picking up sponsors and all that stuff's happening on its own, but yeah. he's very like level-headed and, and uh, he's got a lot of good mentors. I think like Shad Johnson at goods is like Hell yeah. that's kind of taken, taken REA under his wing, nice. but he's 16 and he has like a really good grasp on like BMX history because he's around Shad. So yes. he's constantly looking at old magazines, hearing stories, watching old videos and you can really see him soaking up a lot of that influence along with still doing like modern day tech writing, you know? Yeah. So, you know, he'll do whatever your, your tech ledge combo is. And then, he'll then hit he a can hit a set of trails. Up. Yeah. yeah and then he'll, hit it, he'll, he'll shred a set of trails and he'll do a bar spin to like back seat grab toboggan, like super yeah. stylish. And like, you know, he can just, he can kind of do it all. So it's like, I see a lot, a lot of good stuff in his future. He, he's, He's definitely not like he doesn't have like a narrow scope and 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 he wants to ride everything he can. I love that. All right, Arya. That's a fun fourth one. Arya, do it. All right, don't <laughs> let me down, Arya. <laughs> no pressure, dude. Do good. Don't turn into a knucklehead. You got this, man. <laughs> You're good. Um okay. That's that's that. Let's see, what else is there? What other questions do I ask, too? I don't know. What questions do you ask? Mm -hmm. anything i feel like we did we did good i think uh yeah how long we've been, i think it's been two and a half hours oh wow yeah, yeah. that's crazy it doesn't feel that long but <laughs> i know it's because you've done so longer, fucking much that's longer than anyone needs to hear me speak for sure <laughs> no you're full of full of interesting stuff uh any last words i guess <laughs> i did that with uh chandler in that episode and he took it away and it was it was so fun i was just like man oh, you, do, you do you Dude, that was a really good episode. Like yeah. I, I was familiar with that name, but I wasn't really familiar with him, you know? Yeah. And that was a really like positive, uplifting story to hear Hell someone yeah. like such a bunch of bad shit. Bad and, shit, like, dude. 
just to have like a focus and like something that they're working towards and like, yeah, you know, trying to get and he's there. just yeah. like, unap- just like to see somebody so unapologetically themselves is so sick. Yeah. Like just, yeah. 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 Like when I said any last words made me think of him because he like legit turned to the camera and just like promised everybody he's doing good and shit. And I was just like, I like this. I'm, you can see me looking at him smiling like it's it's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I have any kind of like words of wisdom or anything, but you know, just. Oh yeah, that's the question. Any advice to the young bucks out there? Oh, the any young bucks to yeah. young hungry kids. What do you, well, what do you say bucks, to what, know, like just... with Arye? What do you say to him? Keep your chin up. I mean, I don't have to say anything to him. He knows what he's doing, you know. But yeah. like. You know, just it's kind of the stuff that you 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 would like to think you don't need to. It doesn't need to be said, but you know, just do it because you love it. Don't do it because you're gonna get something out of it. You know, like a sponsorship or you know some money or whatever. I mean, those things are great if they happen naturally, but you know, I think when people force stuff, it's just it never turns out. You know, the, the results are never what you want. You know, if you if you're right. forcing something, forcing a relationship or forcing, you know. I don't know, just trying to make it. It's, you know, if that's your motivation, then you're probably not going to be in it very long. You know, Yeah. you're going to get, you're going to get frustrated. You know, you need to do the BMX stuff like because you love it. You know, if it's riding or filming or, you know, whatever it is, you need to, you need to be into BMX, you know, you need to just like it. Enjoy it. it. Yeah. You need to enjoy it. You need to, it's like, obviously I'm not going to make videos full time every day, all day. If I'm not, able to pay my bills because you got to do something to pay your bills. But I would like to think that it's something I would still be doing occasionally for fun. You know, if I couldn't make yeah. a living at it, you know, like, but I would definitely still be out. I would be out riding, probably be out riding more if I didn't ha- have to do BMX stuff. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know, yeah. but, but yeah, you got to love it. That's it. Really. Just... That's beautifully said. My, yeah. I would say like, don't, you know, I learned, I kind of treated getting sponsored as like a finish line. And that would be my advice is like, don't you treat sponsored yeah. as yeah. like the starting line and go, you know, yeah. I, I yeah. kind of, I did, I learned a lot of lessons through my, my little BMX life. Um, yeah. What I'm curious about with you is what's your favorite place you've ever been? You've been to a lot of places. Oh, wow. You're uh, a worldly man. man. What's that? You're a worldly man. I think that's a word, <laughs> worldly. Been a few places. Um, I would have to say, I mean, there are a lot of places I enjoy going and it, and it really is just, it's more so the people you're with, you know, or who you're visiting or whatever, but I went to Japan a few times and that was like, like I would you're on love to planet, go there, dude. You know? Yeah. That sounds tough. It really is like you're on another planet in a, yeah. in an awesome way. You know, it's like, you're just like, oh man, you don't even know what you're looking at half the time. Yeah. <laughs> All the symbols. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, Japan is really eye-opening. And people are just like super sweet. The culture is like, yeah, I went there. I went there, I think the first time was probably 2001 for a Props Passport DVD I was working on. Mm-hmm. And then I went again, probably around 2005 or so, 2006, I can't remember, for like a Red Bull Circle of Balance, like a Flatland contest. Yeah. And that time I went and I just stayed in, Tokyo for a week with I stayed with my buddy Shuji who lived there but it was just me exploring the city on bike all day for like six days fuck yeah that's and it was so good. really amazing like the fact that I could like I didn't have a bike lock with me and I could set my bike down somewhere go in a museum come out three hours later and my bike is still sitting there what you know like oh yeah it's just that's the culture is like people are I don't know. Respectful. Yeah. I guess that's the word. Good people. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So stuff like that was really cool. And and all the people were just, I met, you know, through the BMX trips were just super nice. Like couldn't be more accommodating and, and happy to see, you know, happy to see you. Yeah. Dude. Somebody just asked me today, like, if you like, uh, so my boss is going on vacation in July and his wife was like, so where are you, where are you going to go? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know where I want to go. Japan. I want to go to Japan. Dude. Go to Tokyo for sure, yeah. man. How much does it take it to Tokyo? I don't. I'm not sure exactly. It's got to be under two grand, right? It's it's worth it. it. Is worth it. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you could hit up like Van Homan or somebody, and he would like put you in contact with a few local riders, and huh. they would they would show you some spots. I'm sure. That'd be sick. I'm the sure. Japanese scene is dope, dude. There's dude. like the street yeah. that they do with the little yep. peg jinks and all the all the stuff that they, it's so sick. I love it. It's really sick and like. Yeah, it's so sick, and the spots are pretty amazing. Yeah, 
okay i'm going to japan dude. playground playgrounds with the transitions and stuff like yeah, yeah. all right Stu, i've run out of juice right. i'm getting tired too old man over here let's let's go to bed it's 10 o'clock for you huh yeah it's 10 o'clock yeah that Thanks is my for, bed actually. thank you very much for coming on man I, you said back a, a while back like i want to do it in person which i would have loved but i'm glad you reached out and let's do it virtual that's so sick yeah i felt bad because i was like man it's been so long since i've been back by you you know like coming yeah. through the area and i was like oh man i don't know when, when i'm gonna have a chance to do this yeah like let's just let's just do it let's just do it over how did here. you know what I, how did we first meet what do you remember that probably um maybe. you know my first I, we, we could have met prior like maybe i came through phoenix a couple times filming for like stuff like for anthem 2 and maybe like dave thompson props bio or something yeah we could I have remember met you there. knew drew I, think I was gonna say I, I remember i remember meeting up with drew to film something maybe for the espn website or something a bike check and yeah. i think you were hanging out with him yeah when i lived with drew for a bit and i sweated Stu. i was like oh my god that's Stu johnson because I, I just same thing i sweated drew hosselton i met him on my 16th birthday and i was just like oh my god that's Drew." I, yeah yeah i, yeah, I, I love I'm like, all that i'm like 100 i'm from like 99 percent sure that you were with drew when we yeah. met that's cool man such good memories with drew hosselton shout out drew hosselton what a, what a dude all right man thank you all right yeah thank you all right that's it uh i'll see you next week nerds hello you've reached the end of the freaking show not redoing that goodbye see you next week